Warning, graphic content, the following images and or content may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Difference Well YouTube channel. I hope you all out there are having a wonderful day like your girl. And if not, manifest, plan, and prepare for a better one because I guarantee you all is surely coming to you guys for show. Sure. And if this is your first, second, third time or more to my YouTube channel, welcome. Happy to have you guys. Before you leave, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and that notification bell. So when I drop content, you guys come into Difference World and you come and learn about your girl, yeah? And speaking of coming and learning, you guys, I'm an author, motivation speaker. Speaker, travel influencer, small business owner of my business, my own business, excuse me, Third Eye Entertainment LLC, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. So again, first, second, third time, or more, it don't matter, baby. Just hit that subscribe button for your girl, yeah. All right, you guys. So we got we coming to you guys different uh, today in different world. Like I said, you know, we spontaneous. This is what happens when in different world we get the notification bell. So as you guys uh, seen, uh, Kat Williams and broke the internet you know the interview here around the world you guys <laughs> if y'all been living under a rock and don't know what's going on in 2024 uh the cat's out the bag um he's letting off a few shots you know so many slugs been shooting at him and, and he's been quiet and keeping his peace and now you know he's been sipping on the yak <laughs> and talking to Shay Shay about it and so um I just decided uh I last year or, or I guess one of my New Year's resolution was to get better at doing you know reaction videos and learn how to do them or whatever and so I took a little uh, tutorial this whole weekend thank you YouTube <laughs> um, and trying some different apps or uh, websites that do this and um, I have to say OBS is, 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 is slapping so uh, I don't know what stream you are not everybody doing what stream you are but it ain't it for me I like OBS I have to say but with that being said you guys uh, I'll be doing my first reaction video and this is none other than to the interview with uh, Shannon Sharp and Cat Williams they just did recently last week and man you know Cat just you know he, he let off a few things about you know the comedy industry and this competition you know lies being told and whole troops and everything and just exposing you know <laughs> industry plants <laughs> Woo! Um, and uh, like I said this is my first reaction video so you guys definitely help me out here with some tips on how I can get better at it and you know some do's and don'ts uh, as well as I don't know again I, I don't own the rights to this video full disclosure I do not own the rights to this interview uh, shout out to Shannon Sharp this is his material and content um, I'll definitely leave uh, information in the um, if the, the description below hopefully YouTube doesn't give me a little flag or a ding uh, against my account or whatever um, but I'll be doing my first reaction video and so again you guys drop me some comments some likes and some tips and showing me what I can do better you know to be a part of you know the the reaction uh, <laughs> community so uh, with that being said you guys we're gonna check into this interview and man I did not know when I first looked on it of course like everybody else I'm seeing the little clips on Instagram and so I'm looking like okay let me see here let me see that and then the receipts start dropping and I'm like okay definitely gotta go and see what what, he, what we're talking about and so when I get there you see that the interview is damn near three hours long I mean damn this shit longer than the color purple my gosh y'all know my attention span is short and so with that I don't know if I'm gonna have to take breaks with this interview I mean this reaction video and like you know um, hit the stop and the pause button or whatever and then come back but we'll see y'all but um, I'm gonna get through it and uh, I'm gonna post it and see if you know YouTube allow me and then you guys drop y'all comment you know you like you share it and you know definitely subscribe to it and so without further ado and me yip yapping and jaw jacking let's get it come and learn yes also, trigger warning, be advised that this uh, interview is intended for a mature audience. It has such the content and graphic material, so again, this shouldn't be viewed with children. And uh, again, I do not own the rights to this video, but I am damn sure going to watch it and give my thoughts and opinions about it and my reaction to it. Here we go. The Kirk Franklin prank. <laughs> okay, this, this is the reckoning. 2024. All my life. Grinding all my life, sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Oh, kind of like the music, though. Slice. What? Got the road of dice, this why. All my life, I've been grinding all my life. Uh, all my life, been grinding all my life. <laughs> sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want to slice, got the roll of dice, this why. All my okay, life, I've been grinding all my life. Skipped it. 
they about this to is the other side. Oh, damn, did I just restart it? Yeah, it started damn. before we started taping. Oh. oh. Well, thank I did. You to it. He Appreciate gave it. a real good Tell intro. That home. I thought they was lying. And, um, <laughs> yeah, this particular alcohol is stronger than you think it would be, probably by about two. And unbelievably, smoother and milder by the same maybe 30% than you could possibly expect. And unlike cognacs the world over, this one doesn't taste like wood at the end, and it doesn't taste like it's got artificial colors, and it doesn't look at taste him. like yeah, it's artificial got artificial, artificial flavors. Look at that, he uh, knows this it's shit. A, it's a fine product. Fine. He's a connoisseur, you can tell. Yeah. He's a connoisseur, he's a cognac First connoisseur. All, <laughs> he understands <laughs> the method that go so goes into pause. making cognac. Right. We well, as a man, comedian, we get, get free drinks at the club. <laughs> so, <laughs> up, all comedians either turn out to be connoisseurs so, like myself right. or straight up and down alcoholics <laughs> like 60% of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks for stopping by the club. I understand Thank that you. you're very, very busy. And for you to take time out of your busy schedule and stop in today, we really, really appreciate it here at Club Shay Shay. Thank so thanks for so stopping much. by, Kat. And I needed you to know why I came by. Yeah, I need you to tell us why. People know I don't go everywhere. <laughs> I'm not interested in talking to people unless it's like a Larry King or somebody of an amazing ilk that I would actually want to go talk to in real life. OK. Um, I don't do it so I can sell product and I got things to sell, so let me come talk. Um, you have a great product here, and as a fan base, we love the attention that you spend on the guests. We, we love how much work you've done, how well you know them, how prepared you are. The same things that we liked about you in football. You brought that on over to here, and that's uh, why it resonates. And the reason I had to come is because you've made a safe place for the truth to be told. You know what I mean? Thank you. I appreciate and that. And I have watched all of these low-brow comedians come here and disrespect you in your face <laughs> and tell you straight-up lies. I'm talking Big about things Bo that have never been heard in all of black Hollywood. They feel comfortable <laughs> sitting here lying to you about it. You gonna set the record straight? Are you kidding me? You let Ricky Smiley sit here and you said out that mouth, you stole Friday after next, the one I was in? I <laughs> wish all, all of America fumbled a bit when that happened. And, and then he said some stuff that we haven't heard in 100 years in Hollywood. You ain't say nothing. Honey. This man told you he had Cat Williams' role. He was gonna be Money Mike. Wait. And Cat Williams was gonna be fr was gonna be the Santa Claus. Now let's three quick points. Three quick. You mean in Hollywood they cast a five foot five black Santa Claus that weigh 145 pounds? That's your story. <laughs> your story is the Ricky Smiley that couldn't even do curse words because he had a Christian fan base. True. Yep. He was going to play the pimp. Why you didn't ask him why has he played a woman in more movies than he's played a man? Oh, damn. Well, right. I didn't right. know he that. shouldn't be able. You wouldn't let an a, a, a athlete that been on steroids talk about one of the greats. <laughs> Ricky Smiley can't act because Ricky Smiley can't act. He told you the story about when the movie came out. Where did he say he watched it? At home. He wasn't even at the premiere. You telling this man, you stole that. Oh, so he could get his name in the same sentence with a great one. It is sad. He was just that bitter when we were shooting it. He told everybody, it should have been my role. Everybody on the scene. Why do you think no cast member has ever said anything? He couldn't have played that role like you. I thought he, he Sir, was... Sir, no one... Why no... He was with KD? He beat up Terry Crews? Why <laughs> nobody know this story? You talking about in Hollywood, they switched off roads. You take this and he, what? So Ricky, Ricky Smiley 
knows this. And I don't know why he would lose a child and come on the air and start lying. Oh, That's why people on, believe in rituals now. right there. I don't, I don't it's because, that, well, why would he lie? I don't know why liars lie. But I Me can either. tell you this. this we auditioned in that. Los Angeles. Yes. I was audition number 201. 200 black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Mike with me. You're saying all 201 of us was auditioning and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days? <laughs> the truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. And that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. Mm -hmm. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we're talking about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy, right. where I have all the credibility and all the pull. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a rape. Mm -hmm. And rape is never yeah, funny, yeah, exactly. no matter who it I happens agree. to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man. So, flag on the play. That's a gem right there. I never knew that that was a scene that they were supposed to be in the movie, but he fought to keep it out of. Very serious uh, uh, note. Rape is never funny to talk about or... or, or uh, put in a, a, a film and make it funny about it, no matter who it is, male or female. And so kudos to Kat for standing on business with that. Just got to let that be said. Now let's get back at it, y'all. Come on. Let's and come getting raped in it, mm -hmm. I promise you that it will be twice as funny as it would be with him getting raped. Mm -hmm. So was. considering that's the real story, <clears throat> why would you bring up that story? 35 members of the cast and crew have never brought up that Ricky Smiley was going to play Money Mike. No one ever saw me put on a Santa Claus suit. We got a wardrobe department. They made a Santa Claus suit for me. Why that wasn't in the bloopers? Why? <laughs> and, and here's the other thing. Everything here's the other that thing. Money Mike yeah. said, Cat Williams wrote. So what Ricky Smiley say on his? You can't say my lines, I wrote them. He That's how I already ho, ho, know ho. that I'm going to be funnier no, no, than you. you look like one what of he told everybody was, was Cat Williams, eh, eh, don't nobody know who he is? I'm on the radio. I'm with Steven Said. Everybody know me. That's what he told everybody that would listen to on the set. That's the truth of the matter. He was so egregious. Not oh, now. Egregious. Then. He <laughs> was, was so word, egregious. that And Hollywood Let's has never heard this in a hundred years. The interview, he was so egregious. I put below. in my contract that I won't work with Ricky Smiley again unless he's in a dress. Mm. Now, what was Ricky Smiley's next movie? Was it First Sunday? Sure was. Did he wear a dress in it? Sure you bet he did. It's in my yeah. contract. Why would you put that in your put his, in your contract, Cat? That's where he's the, a believable actor. Him oh, and yeah. Tyler Perry can't play a man to save oh, their life. Too early to bring in Tyler Perry. They play good women, and I believe that the best actor should be in the best role. True. So that's why, because when we released that clip and he said that, you responded because he said he was supposed to play Money Mike and you were supposed to play, play Santa Claus. An outright lie. So that he knows is a lie. Uh, so why would he say it? Because he's a liar. Nobody knows why liars lie. And that's why I had to come on the program. Mm -hmm. Cedric did the same thing. Cedric told you when you asked him, did you steal Cat Williams' joke? Yeah. He said, it don't line up. How it don't line up that I did it on TV in 2018? You came to see me at the Comedy Store do it in 2019 and then did it on the Kings of Comedy. Like, what doesn't line up? I, this is a televised joke that Mark Curry helped me punch up and get to the level that it was. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he, and then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business. And it's a man unit. Um, not the then man you. you. Him, oh, no. A movie star. I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same <laughs> Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. 
Hold on. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asks for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good over KB and look like <laughs> Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. You have to have a range. Hold on. Uba Kiba. Hold on now. <laughs> okay, wait a minute now. Not even 10 minutes into... <laughs> Not even 10 minutes into the interview, and he already off the rip ribbon. He didn't rib Ricky Smiley. He didn't rib Cedric. He didn't rib uh, Tyler Perry. He didn't rib Steve. This man did not come to play, y'all. <laughs> Let's see who else. This is the 10 minutes, y'all. I played minutes. a lot of characters, 60 movie roles. I'm not playing Cat Williams in there. I don't know. I don't know, Cat. We might not let you drink anymore. The way you, you. I mean, we ain't even got. I'm not fueled no, by all. Not drink it then. I got a drink less than you. Less than him. How many drinks y'all think they're gonna take by the end? The truth don't need motivation. Drop I'm a just saying I can't let these dudes the lie. First one to get Cedric's the sitting here telling you why he ain't right. a movie star. He don't really look like a card. walrus. You didn't say nothing. He can't even get his arms <laughs> off his stomach sitting over here. Why I'm not a movie star? Okay, let me stop it right here. I was saying while I was talking, and I missed that. Uh, uh, drop a comment below at the end to see how many uh, uh, toasts or drinks they take or shots they take, whatever, throughout the interview. <laughs> and whoever drops the comment, the first one to get the correct amount correct for each each Shannon and uh, Kat, I'll send you guys a $100 gift card. Yeah? Let's go. So going back to the walrus. Damn! We got one set of walrus. <laughs> It's a situation. He never wrote anything. Remember, when Cedric the Entertainer starts, he's supposed to be singing, dancing, and telling jokes. That's why he's called the Entertainer. Right. We found out he can't sing, can't dance, and doesn't he's write doing jokes. An album. He did four comedy specials. They're so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Can I say that they again for the Tubi? audience? They're so bad that they're not available on Netflix or, or Tubi. Tubi? You don't think Cedric's a good, a good comedian? Yo. Hold on, y'all. If it ain't on Tubi, then it means it's a real problem because Tubi got damn near everything you want. Uh, uh, to hell with HBO Max. So shout out to them, though. Uh, 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 stars and all them. It, Tubi's where it's at. So if you ain't on Tubi, man, yeah, it's a problem. And But come to think about it, I've never seen a, a Cedric special before. I've only seen him in the Kings of Comedy. The world doesn't think that, sir, I have 12 comedy specials. He has four specials that are not available on Netflix or Tubi. It seems to me, Kat, that you had a lot to get off your chest. No, yeah, you no. Do. You wanted to say I the record story. Line, Winners Kat. are not allowed to allow losers to rewrite history. So you mean you I don't the say any of these things if my name is not Kat. breached by these people on your platform. They, if you give them a liar a platform to lie, then I, I'm not being messy by saying, hold on, that never happened, it's untrue, and there are hundreds of witnesses for each thing I'm saying. So let me ask you this. What is your relationship with Steve Harvey, Ricky Smiley, and Cedric the Entertainer as you sit here currently? They clearly he ribbing the shit out of them. Years, they're a group. I mean, you These aren't three random guys. The way that Ricky Smiley <laughs> kept <laughs> appearing at all of my auditions is because of Steven said he would tell anybody that listen, they got a gang on that side. They know what it trying is. To figure out what they the know who the gang is. is. Why is earthquake F? not in movies? Because he's folk? illiterate. He can't read. Oh, no, and they not found earthquake. that out when they gave him a show and put the cards in front of him. Why are you like talking all about of earthquake? these dudes are co-entwined and they share secrets. And this is the age of truth. And and oh, and the truth doesn't need to be scared of the that. fact that people tell lies. Uh, cats on drugs. Where are the stories? Why is there no story of anybody who ever sold a drug to me, did a drug with me, was around me when I was inebriated? I got five daughters. I got five sons. Why would we tell these ridiculous stories? Because it's com competition. You you feel like, well, why comedy, comedy guys can't just get along? Yes. Why, why, why didn't you get along with the other teams you were competing against? If you're a Denver Bronco, why you don't get along with the Cowboys? Something wrong with you? But I don't disagree. I don't no, dislike no, all the no. Cowboys. Cat, damn, you like this. No, damn, okay, not. what comedians do you Did like? Did you play against the team? Yes. 
I've taken 46 comedians with me on the road. 46. Okay. I'm not the comedian you can give that to. I only put on comedians that are funnier than me. Anybody that ever told you differently was a fat Faison liar. There's nobody Damn, like me now, in Faison. the business. Faison well, just called six now because earthquake shit. God Faison Damn. said that. How many comedians y'all think he ribbed tonight, y'all? Drop a comment below. Hit that specials. subscribe and that like button. That's how many Faison got. Zero. Damn. So Why is he allowed to have conversations about real stand-up people? Question or or, or no? Honestly, I just now learned I was today years old when uh, no shade. Today years old when I learned Faze on Love was a comedian, like a stand up comedian. I only thought he was a comedian actor. <laughs> oh man, I'm learning some shit, y'all. Uh, I've only seen it, as a matter of fact, in a few movies. Um, Friday, of course, that's Big Worm. What else? Kuja Caddy. Uh, uh, another one with Chris Tucker. Oh, yeah, Money Talks. And another one he played in. Uh, oh, yeah, well, one with Martin Lawrence, the Big Mama's House. So that's the only couple of four movies that I've seen him in. And so I've never known him as a comedian, like a stand-up comedian. So that's I, I kind of side with Cat on that. Why is he allowed to speak on that? I ain't never seen no special with him either. Have y'all? <laughs> <laughs> as well as you guys drop a comment below on how many uh comedians y'all think he ribbed and and <laughs> hit that like share comment and subscribe button for your girl if you enjoying the reaction video so far man these are my real authentic reactions and <laughs> my thoughts and opinion on the matter so uh share yours as well let's go come and learn back at it we do not let people who are on the juice discuss real athletes get off that that's juice. all as a journalist that's all. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I don't ha harbor any resentment to any of these entities because I can't be jealous. I've never seen them have anything that I ever wanted. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin, weird face wife oh, that no. never do an interview. Oh, in no. uh -huh. Listen, in 20 Hello, years, cat. won't do an interview. <laughs> Nobody's ever talked to her, and that she's never been uh, interviewed now, anywhere. And now, understand, I'm not talking about one person. What I just told you applies to seven people. How they all end up with that. Mm -hmm. That's part of what you get. I came in this business saying I was going to expose. When I talked about Michael Jackson, when I talked about R. Kelly, they canceled me for these things because why would you talk about another black dude? Race is not where the line is drawn. It's God's side and the other side. Hmm. And we don't care nothing about the other side. Period. Period. All Period. of these uh, big dick deviants <laughs> is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for big all of deviants. them. It don't matter if you yep. Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, uh, every, Come on, all now. I lies got to will be I exposed. To That's all. Who he and, is, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. The truth don't like is and they favor, you know, celebrity. Amen. Not who they think it is. That's why you never supposed to meet your celebrity in real life. I, I kind of <clears throat> get one here. Yeah, right. go ahead, get you some water dehydrate. Let me give me a little sippy. I'm glad I don't really kind of know where to go. Let me one more time. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm. Right. Mm. We good now? Because the people oh, want to know, well, why would he get blackballed? Yeah. Oh, because, yeah, I've always wanted, yeah. because in 30 the... years, I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. True. So if you and a man was in a corner doing something you wasn't supposed to be doing. You would tell it. No, somebody come to tell me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I <laughs> gather <laughs> that, I value that, I'll Wait, pay for that. that question, come, how tell would you me. Know when I know so there. many things I should know and they all know it. They all know it. Why, because you don't make me the villain. Not the guy that raises black children and ain't never done a hard drug in his life and don't have no stories of doing nobody dirty. And, and they'll just go out and they'll lie. The, the industry doesn't mess with Cat because he didn't show up for the studio. No studios have ever said that. Look at my IMDb. It will show you that no studio has ever lost money with me on the script. 
to Kai MDB. That's why I'm saying, that's why I can't let Ricky Smiley say he was supposed to play Money Mike. Because I wrote the words for Money Mike. I designed the hair for Money Mike. I collaborated with the wardrobe department and made outfits to make sure that no one in America would be wearing what Money Mike was wearing. I told them to go get the Prowler. I then told them to paint it purple. I told them don't have an actor at playing a pimp. We could get an actual pimp Archbishop Magic Don Juan to play. Like, I Keep I did far tight. too much like. work for somebody to come years later and try to tag really along trying, is that just yeah, that's for their F, own woke self-aggrandizement. Folk. Why I didn't Q set folk. the record straight? <laughs> Terry Crews could have set the record straight. Mike Epps could have set the record straight. Why none of them set the record straight? That's what you were supposed to ask him when he told exactly. you those lies. Why you didn't know what the lie? Right, but this he's telling you something no one's ever diligence. heard of. It's Nobody has research. ever heard. Oh, Matt Aff Ben Affleck and Matt Damon was in a movie, and somebody said, y'all should switch roles. And, like, Damn. this is a business. But that's the thing, Kat. <laughs> Normally, when people are giving you information, I'm thinking I'm hearing it for the first time, and they're giving information no one else knows or has ever heard. So I'm taking them at face value. These are like this is like Steve Harvey telling people he used to be homeless. That's my story. <laughs> and that's not too. his story. Steve Harvey wasn't never homeless. When he Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago, he was making three thousand dollars a show in yeah. cash and doing five shows a week. They, they just God tell God the stories. This my thanks to my wife, I'm where I am. You said that about the first wife. You forget that? <laughs> you told us it was her. Then you went and married somebody else that think like a man. Oh, like, Lord. what are you talking about? They just, they think they can rewrite history. The, uh, uh, Guy Tory did a beautiful special about the comedy store and Fat Tuesday where he said that Steve and Cedric and Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish came through there and made... All lies. Steve and Cedric never performed at the I comedy store at all. Tiffany was only seen at the Lab Factory. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy he club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and mm. had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was oh, leading. No, we've never Pause. So on that part, that's true. I've always wondered how, how how did Kevin Hart come up so quick if he was a comedian and how he started out. And then listening to his backstory, yeah, how he started out on the East Coast and he suddenly ended up on in Los Angeles in striking a deal to end up in I think was what paper soldiers really where he took off. And then uh Soul Plane happened, in which I didn't really like him in Soul Plane. And as, as a matter of fact, I never really <laughs> liked Kevin Hart to begin with as an actor. He is very annoying. He's like the same in all all his movies oh my god james Cameron! i still have yet to finish through right along too man because this man uh annoying uh, antics and gestures it's just like that in every movie and so it's hard for me to like enjoy the movie with kevin hart in it and this is way before cat williams came out with his little <laughs> piece about it and so um it uh, this just feeds into what he's saying makes a lot more sense to me about kevin hart i don't know how y'all feel about it so drop a comment below on y'all thoughts of, with the kevin hart and cat williams beef um sure he's responding but all his he's, he's, he ain't calling me a lot that's one thing everybody that's responding to cat williams in his interview they have yet to call him a liar and with the receipts popping up and dropping on y'all yeah, he got everybody shook, especially Kevin Hart. So um, with that, y'all, let's get back into it. I'm going to stop. I'm going to try not to do so many pauses, but I don't want to talk over the video and you guys can't hear me or the video. So that's why, again, I'm, I'm pausing and be mindful, y'all. This is still my first reaction video, so I don't know how it's done and, and how many times you guys, you know, are supposed to stop or how it's supposed to go. So, again, that's why you're supposed to be helping me out. Help your girl out, y'all. Drop a comment below and, and show me how it go. And hit that like button and that subscribe if y'all enjoying it so far, yeah? Let's go. Come on. Heard of that before that person or since that person? Mm -hmm. What do you think a plant is? Maybe people don't understand the definitions of these words. <laughs> Sense, he just did his documentary with Chris Rock where he shows you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast. The East Coast. Yeah, it was. So how simultaneously was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? It did happen. 
It didn't happen. And I, I, I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking apart lies, but Jussie Smollett gonna keep lying oh, until you oh, say we don't believe you. What does Jussie got to do with this? Like, what it's he important do? Leave that man alone and let him get himself together, y'all. That liars not get to make complete narratives for themselves. Are you not afraid about being blackballed again? These are some power people. What do you mean again? Shannon, your camel toe These joy. people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. Amen. That includes blessings for his people. Amen. That's why, do you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood yeah, is? Got is to, to act like joke. it didn't happen. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. They all do the same job. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in Gary comedy thought he was for 25 him, years? He was like, is this a diss? If what <laughs> I like, say no, ain't the case. Didn't soul. <laughs> it's a cabal. It's a, it's a consortium. They, it's they a rock with who they rock with and they Mortal don't with who they don't. But I'm not scared of being the competition any more than you were when you lined up uh, uh, across from a superior team. Yeah, on paper, they're a better team. Right. They have all the assets and resources, and we don't. But let us get on the line, boy, boy. Boy, boy. And oh, I ain't heard that in a long time. I, I boy, boy. You it won't. Wow. <laughs> I used to say that back in because like, Shannon Sharp got to be a different person than that other bro, person. Bro. And, all that. Absolutely. Boy, boy, and he always was. Back, boy, boy. That doesn't change when I change teams. That remains the same. That's how a legacy is built. So all of these shortcut takers, I, I was, they canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he yeah. offered to suck my penis in front of all my oh, people no, at my agency. To gawk, gawk in front of what everybody. am I supposed to not do? The white man. He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the That's only the black person on the team. script. I get there, there's three other black guys on there. Oh, Woo. No. Huh. So you wonder what they did to get that? <laughs> I told him no. What y'all do? I want to know the name. <laughs> Who are they? And this is why when I walk in a room, heads go down. Same for me. Behind my back, I'm nothing. Oh, I'm just yeah. a regular old comedian that's well, bitter and jealous. In but in my face, no, no, no. Okay. The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I've not taken the shortcuts. I've not been funded. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. Mm -hmm. They and tell the you that shopping, themselves. Well, I can't do that because I uh, Steve told you that he plan. stopped doing stand up because Thank he has you. seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up I mean, he because he got in a comedy battle yeah. called the Championship yeah. of Stand Up Comedy I with one video. Cat Williams in Detroit in front of ten thousand people and he lost because Cat Williams apart. said he was actually bald and that was a wig and I went. And that's why he couldn't do stand up he didn't anymore. Have balls, Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they, they wanted to be Mac. movie young, stars. Young, young boy, who you with? What? You called Ocean Eleven to get that nigga's part. What? What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie it's star? Like my bitch. So on the behalf of Bernie. I, I would have to say what I have to say. Have you have ever been on truth. Have you ever been on tour like with Bernie, any of these yeah, guys? The guy, I, every guy I mentioned to you is not funny out there in real life. Damn. So no. Well, at least Faison's didn't never Mike, done his own tour in Mike 30 Gipped. years. Steve Harvey don't do stand up no more. Cedric doesn't write. I'm sorry, he doesn't write. Ricky Smiley has been playing the same old black woman forever. Like, you can't get a young fan True. base with that. True. But hey. Like, you got to be doing karaoke the day, the around the country to make that character. work. Right. And he is. But I'm a stand-up comedian. This is my 19th 100-city tour. I'm not going to have a conversation with these lazy bums that'll take a shortcut at any point. Yes, it's easier for you to juice than to get in the gym. But you don't get to bring that body in here talking crazy. Talk about boy, how good boy. you look. What? No, no. There's too many comics out there that are you putting their life that. on the line to tell these jokes, man. Okay. Let's get to your upbringing. We're going to circle back and we'll get some... Uh -huh. I want to protect him real quick because you had said for the Kings of Comedy, it was in 2018, 2019, but yeah, did you get in 1999? Because yeah. it came Back out in 2000. No, no, no. So what I meant to say was, remember, he said, I couldn't do stand-up anymore. 
I had seven no, TV not shows. Steve. I said he didn't have any of those TV shows at the time. I know you talking about, you talking about Cedric. Joke still. Yeah, Cedric. Cedric. Yeah, it's Cedric. Oh, okay, so, so, okay. 2018, 2019, but it came out in 2000, so I just want to make sure. You... Okay, no, 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 no. No. What comes out in 2000? The, the original Kings of Comedy. Right. My, I'm on BET's Comic View, and they're using this as the commercial in 1998. Okay. That's why I'm saying, yeah. So, so if I, yeah. yeah. So if I yeah. said the yeah. date's wrong, yeah. yeah. So yeah. You, let's go ahead and clear that up. Okay. On that you too. said, yeah. said this silly joke. I had basically. Cedric on here, and I asked him about the joke stealing, and yeah. he said the timeline doesn't add up. Correct. To your, to to that point, you say. Right, so he thought that I was just a no-name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Right. The issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. Right. It had done so well on BET's Comic View that they had made it part of the commercial. So part of the commercial of make sure you tune in to BET was you seeing me doing this joke. Right. And this joke is one of those jokes in comedy where you set it up and it takes a little longer to set it up. It takes about three minutes. But then you're just hitting them with jokes after right. that because you don't have to set it up. Right. Uh, Mark Curry had already helped me work on this joke because I thought it was good because I was getting a standing ovation on it. He had me go back in the lab and help me craft it to be an even more powerful joke. So this is not just a random joke. This is my very best joke, mm -hmm. and it's my last joke, and it's my closing joke. OK. 1998, I'm doing this joke. It's on Comic View. Cedric comes to the comedy store. He watches me in the audience. He comes backstage. He tells me what a great job I did and how much he loves the joke. Two years later, he's doing that as his last joke on the Kings of Comedy. And he's doing it verbatim. He's just changed my car into a spaceship. Him and Steve had already apologized. All right, pause on the break with that one. Okay, so I did go back and see the receipts on that. So in comparison of that video, what he was saying was um, he stole the basis of the joke, riding in the hood with a Cadillac or whatever. Uh, only difference I seen with Cedric changing was the space shuttle. He had the cigarette and the different music, but the gesture was the same. The the uh, the meaning of it and everything, the genre, it was still basically the same. Even the motions and the movement was still the same. And so, basically, yeah, said stole his joke <laughs> or the basis of it, and just tried to put his own little stink of it. It's basically you know plagiarism, if you call it. If you, we was in school, they'd be plagiarizing, technically for me so i gave him a pass for a decade. Oh, decade why would you sit here and be like i talked to i saw cat 30 times <laughs> and cat didn't do as i stand before you oh no shannon uh-uh i would have bust cedric's stomach <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing that would have kept me from one of these <laughs> in, in that patch down. right there. Like, are you kidding me? Good. Why would you downplay me like that? Oh Why did I God. give you a pass if you were just gonna lie? And so that's what I'm saying. Like, they're that's all a group. Cedric, Steve, Ricky, they've been a group. Everybody knows Bust. that. They've been aligned. <laughs> and, and there are these alliances in comedy. And if you stand against them, then they sometimes have a problem. But... We don't let that change the content because that's all you know me for is that I'm quite likely to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Can you believe tell we're a joke, but never a lie. Season? All right, we so with that, y'all, let's see we here. We're going to skip it up some. Uh, see what else you're talking about here. Let's see. Let's just do it back. Okay read fluently at three years of age so having that kind of knowledge having that oh, kind wait of, a minute y'all uh, 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 you were brilliant born in cincinnati oh, ohio raised in dayton ohio hmm. what was cat williams upbringing like your parents were jehovah witness you were a, a prodigy you were brilliant you talked to me that you got accepted to college at seven years of age you could read fluently at three years of age so having that kind of knowledge having that kind of uh, uh, uh um. of, of, of prodigy or so what was so I mean was it what was your upbringing how how was it how was okay so <laughs> for safekeeping and entertainment purposes and time uh, keeping purposes we're gonna skip this part as well as uh, 
I will say for this most interview, Cat tells the truth for the most part. But on some parts, you could tell, well, you know, I won't say he was lying, but that, that, that yak was definitely getting to him. And so uh, I don't know if this is true or not, getting accepted into uh, college at seven years old. I do believe that he could read, read, have read uh, fluently at three. I was able to, I was reading by the age of four or five, you know, big girl books. And so I believe that, um, as well as he said, he would read 3000 books a day. Hmm. Okay. I don't know about that. I'm not going to dismiss it, but I am going to give you that crazy ass look and just, you know, say, Hey, if you say so, keep it moving. Okay. Who am I to judge? Right. <laughs> okay. So with that being said, y'all for time sake wise, y'all know I got a short attention span. We're going to speed this thing on up. This is basically what he's talking about. His upbringing, like he, Shannon said, grew up in Ohio. Family was a Jehovah's witness. He basically, uh, knew his calling in life at 13 wasn't in line with what his parents thought. And so he left home at 13, uh, been on the streets, you know, went to Florida and worked his way to, what was that, Oklahoma, then to somewhere in, in Oakland, and that's how he got started in uh, comedy. So that's basically what he's talking about. So we're going to skip over this part. But with that being said, apropos to our conversation prior to how many shots each Shannon and um, uh, what's old boy, my bad, Cat Williams take, this still uh, will retain. I've, I've seen the interview already, so I'm telling you guys about it. But they still uh, tell me the answer, and it's still included with this piece that I'm cutting out. So don't think y'all getting out, uh, getting away with that. You still got to tell me, all right? So let's just skip it up some. See where we at with it. I think if I can remember correctly, we gonna skip to like 54. It's gonna fall out of the guidelines. Right. But I'm not gonna let you tell me what I'm going to be. Yeah, see, that's where he was, you know, fighting with his dad and stuff. I, we've all been there. Hey, you know, me and my mom, we didn't always get along. Me and my dad, we don't get along like that. But, hey, family is still family. So, um, After, so you traveling. When did you set up shop on the West Coast? All How right. old were you then? So I, I guess I'm... I think he has 54 minutes, y'all. All the funny guys are already funny and known names. Like, how am I going to progress? Uh -huh. So I realized that I, I, I do better with a white audience than I do with a black audience. And I, I'm not sure why that's occurring. Okay. But the white audience likes me more. That's, that's interesting. So when I moved to Sacramento, it's because Sacramento, Sacramento. has a white and a black audience almost 50-50. That's okay. almost the makeup of Sacramento. So I live in Sacramento for two years until I get to the point where I am equally as funny if the room is black as I am if the room is white. Okay. That's not enough. Now I need to be one of the good ones when it comes to black comics. Mm -hmm. So now I have to move to Oakland, and that's what lands me in Oakland for three years. Once I have dominated uh, male black comedy in Oakland, to my liking, now I'm prepared to go to Los Angeles now. Now I know you can't throw me any curveballs. If it's a white audience, if it's a black audience, no matter what they are, I'm what about prepared Asians to deal and with all you know, of the one audiences. Comes like Pino, hey, do you have jokes it? according to the audience that you're going to be in front of, or uh, or is your joke universal? Well, in in the beginning, I. Part of my framework is that I'm tailoring every show to this audience. Okay. And that's how I was able to show my range and show that I was better than my competitors, is that I'm Cat Williams, but I was still doing clean comedy. So I was still going to churches and doing 45 minutes of stand-up at the church with no curse words, no comedy sex Jesus. drug material, no none of that, just straight stand-up. And then I was doing everything else. And I- At the regular club. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the range, is that where, when in Rome, do as the, the Romans Roman. do. I've so Rome, um, by the way, that's, that's how I started. Um, but as you begin to get better, you begin to be able to speak to your entire fan base. And that's really what's been helpful is that I've been having the same conversation with my fan base for 12 comedy specials. Is that so. what set Cat Williams apart is your range? 
is that you can do a comedy, do 45 minutes in the church. I can go to a comedy club in front of 250, or I can go into an arena with 15,000. Um, that's range because everybody can't do that, cat. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's what range is called, then 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 yeah, it's range. But I I like the people I'm talking to. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it's not it's not like um, it can't be condescending because I'm talking to my white male friend when I'm telling that white joke. Right. When I'm talking about this joke about this black lady, I know that black lady. That's who I'm talking to. I'm I'm. I'm, I'm speaking to this fan base that I've been speaking to from the beginning. I already told them what I was on when I first came in. I told them they was going to come after me. They was going to cancel me. They was going to say terrible things about me and try to mess my life up. I, I said that coming in to stand up. I'm, I'm saying it in my So you knew what it was going to be? It has to be. I know I'm going into the belly of the beast. How could I be naive? I know that I'm going into Satan's playground, but I'm trying to be so good that you got to bring me in so close that I can see who's doing what and what's going on in there. In San Francisco, you joined the nation. I was ever in San Francisco. I was in Oakland. You were in Oakland. Did you join the nation? Is that... Yeah, you Minister, Honorable Minister Farrakhan, and I have... Um, an extremely close relationship. He, he refers to me um, as one of his sons. So, um, yeah, I, I spent a particular period of time. Let me explain. Yes. Because my particular background was already religious mm -hmm. and super strict, right? I didn't find out about other religions by reading about them. I went to their religion. I, I, I don't want to learn from Jewish people from outside. I want to be in the synagogue. I want to. I, I don't want to learn about Muslim people from. I, I want to be in the mosque. I, I, I don't want to hear about the Baptist or the Pentecostal. I want to go to their church okay. and see. And so that was the religious discovery that I was on through that period in my life. When did you know you were funny? Hmm. Probably. Um, about 10 years ago. <laughs> like, 10 years ago? Really? Yeah, about 10 years ago. So you, didn't think, so you didn't think as a child, because obviously you said the very structured background. Man, low key, I want them to get to the, to the ribbon. So <laughs> obviously you didn't get an opportunity. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And I, I mean, I yeah, like I never know, did a talent show. Real, I was never in any, any extracurricular I activities. I, know I was I never in like. drama. I was never in band camp. I was never a boy scout. And like, you didn't stay in school like, long enough to get funny because you dropped. You understand. You understand. <laughs> so there was no, like, I don't. <laughs> I don't tolerate high school games. I didn't go to high school. I don't. I don't know how most of the games they think I play. I'm not even aware of. Them. But I, but Cap, for you to get on stage and yeah. like I said, a lot of people like a lot of comedians. I had a few here. Yeah. They're like, okay, you know, I told jokes to get girls. I told jokes to you know get people to laugh at someone else. Yeah. But you, it's like, at, you say you did comedy one time in Florida. And you had this other opportunity, to, like in Oklahoma, that they were going to take you out if you won the talent show. You was going to go on the road with these these well known comedians. And I did. But I'm just saying, how at, in Florida at 13, 14 years of age, you like 16? I can do that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Well, because I like knew the that there were a lot of other things I could do. Like when I looked at drug dealers, I thought I could do that. Yeah. You but that's easy. So I, <laughs> right. And who doesn't like that? <laughs> right. Huh? Yeah. I, I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna make it. But now that I gotta do it on this side, I, I but no, you your question was, when did I think I was funny? I never was my biggest fan. I to this day I'm not the biggest fan. I'm a fan of comedy. I like great comedians. Like I like Chappelle, I like Patrice O'Neill, like I like the greats of comedy because I do. Like like I, I like Ron White. I like Bill Ingvall. Like I know comics. Like people that did the craft, they raised me. I was touring with Steve Marmel and Richard Jenny and real journeymen. Mm -hmm. So my comedy upbringing was standard. 
I thought you had to work all night, every night, all around the country, and you had to write jokes, and that you were trying to write jokes that other people weren't writing, and that your job was to be funnier. Like, I, it, people that know me will tell you, I've been on this. Like, I, I had a list of all the black comedians that were more famous than me. There was 300 of them on the list, and I had to be able to cross them all out before I could make it to the next level before I felt like I was funny enough to do that. And so I, I, I appreciate what competition does for sports and for my particular sport. And, and comedy is a sport. What gave you the confidence that you could get on stage? You remember I was five years old on stage. But I was reiterating God's word at that point. Oh. Now, I just have to make sure that the content is good. If the content is good, what part can I not do? I'm a vessel. He's given me these gifts to be able to do certain things. So I just want to utilize them in my craft. That's hmm. all. Do you remember your first set? Mm-hmm. How long? Five, ten minutes? No, no. Um, I, I think three minutes. Three minutes? Yeah. Standing ovation, booze, some applause, some jeers. No, none of that. They <laughs> they applauded like I was a professional at it. But now looking back, I understand. Because you got to understand, they were all thinking, he don't even look old enough to be in here. And we don't have any black guys that live in this town. Right. Where did he come from? <laughs> and then he gets up there, and for three minutes, he talk about the fact that he is the entire black community. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And he is as disappointed in them. It looked like they looking for where the rest of them is. And so is he. And that was his set. But I understood from that point that the truth is really the commodity and the fact that um, we are all individuals and all separate and all our own islands, but not in real life. In real life, it's only five or six different types of people, and you're going to see them everywhere that you go. And mm -hmm. all, like, all my enemies all look the same in the eyes, whether it's Faison, Wanda, Harry <laughs> Spears, they all look like... Man, what you got against Wanda, Wanda Sykes? Yeah, what you do? You think I don't remember that? Sir, Wanda Sykes and Wanda Smith are two separate people. <laughs> hold on. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah baby, hold on. Wanda, 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 Wanda Sykes. He ribbed the shit out of that woman, and I don't think she recovered from that shit since to this day. When when did that happen? 2015, 2016? <laughs> Damn near <laughs> 10 years ago, and people are still talking about it to this day, y'all. If y'all don't know what I'm talking about, uh, type in uh, Wanda Smith and Cat Williams uh, roasting whatever. It, it's, it's out there. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please, Cat, tell us your thoughts on this. We, we definitely like to hear what what was going on? Thanks. I'm crazy. It's amazing. I love Wanda. <laughs> and I agree. I love Wanda. That's I agree. my girl. Wanda but I, I remember on the radio, you went on the radio interview. If I'm not mistaken, that's in Atlanta. Right. And you came on there with seemingly good intentions. And oh, she yeah. attacked you. It wasn't just that part. It was the fact that before I go in there, she has a conversation about, okay, now. Well, I just want to talk to you because you just won an Emmy for the city of Atlanta, and this is in Atlanta, and they just want to hear about the Emmy and hear from you and to thank you for what you did putting the city on. Right. Okay. And we won't talk about your kids. We won't talk about jail, no cases. We ain't going to talk about none of that. Right. And immediately gets in there and goes the opposite way. You can't flip up on me because you're an mm -hmm. inferior comedian. I'm going to destroy you, and I'm never going to call you out of your name. True. I'm never going to say anything disrespectful chamber, to people that look like like you. About I'm, I'm, it's a very doobies. thin line I got a call, but this lady is trying to embarrass me in front of a largely homosexual fan base. That's why she got canceled. Did he say, don't, gay he people don't take it kindly gay. that you would, call him gay. as a derogatory, I don't remember. I call go back me and gay. Gay people don't feel like it's derogatory. So why are you trying to shame me with something in a community I don't even belong in? There's no gay people saying I belong over there or been over there. You did, did but I have no hatred of over there, and how dare you? You did a number on it, though. Mm -hmm. Hey. You did a number on it. That, that's legendary. No, you either believe in karma or you don't. 
because I didn't even know any of the stuff that she had done to my fellow comedians until afterwards. I just know she that it was a setup. Right. And and, and remember, they they tried to kill me this same. Oh, week. they tried Not to unalive you. Jokes. With a real, real gun in my real pee. face on oh, real no. camera. Understand I'm losing my life for participating oh, in something that goes along with my job. Like, this two comedians, what do you mean? And, and the world was okay with it because it was me. Had that happened to anyone else, the world went crazy when Will smacked, smacked Chris. Well, this is a person we'll rock pulling the shit a out whole of gun on a comedian in the confines of their job. It's, a, it's really a weird situation uh, when they hate you that bad. Yeah. Yeah. You felt she hated you at that moment because you you mentioned that she said it was going to be very professional. Oh, you want an Emmy? Congratulations. You put the city on. You own for the city. Yada, yada, yada. And now, did she mention anything about the Emmy on camera? I believe you saw the video <laughs> and you know. Right? You know, you know, Shane. You know, good as hell <laughs> well you've seen that interview. Why the issue is that um, dumb, dumb. all the comedians have to come do these radio stations right. because you have to sell your tickets. And so that means you have to go to the radio station. Yes. yes. I, I don't go to the radio station and I don't make posts to sell tickets. I just don't. So you've not seen me. I'm I haven't I'm not here in some subservient position nope. where somebody sent me over. I'm You here out of the kindness of your heart. You are. No, no, I'm saying in, no, but in no, the interview radio, yeah, yeah, yes. situation. Yes. Yeah, like yes, right. For sure. Yeah, and this person knew I wasn't there for that or Yeah, it's But how hard because you have to understand, she is a female. And so you have to be careful. You have to handle her with kid gloves. Sir, sir. <laughs> you want to go ahead and take that out? You don't want to be against equality, do you? No, no. What you just said was very unequal, sir. <laughs> yes. But you think maybe you've had enough of this? <laughs> because I think I just heard you, you say you 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 that women are not equal and should be they, treated unequally. They and are, I, they want to be treated. You mean equal. as a comedian? No, no. They want. Listen, you understand, and I understand. Yeah. In certain situations, they want to be treated equal. Not all situations. And and what part of what you saw her get? Oh, she what, deserved everything no, you no, gave oh, her. What part would have <laughs> right? been different if she was a man? As a female, I say that she was. It would have just been more vicious. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. that's my point. That's took, my point. I took all the vicious and venom away because it? I didn't have any. Plus, I understood. I'm not trying to offend black women with short hair. I'm not trying to offend heavyset women. I'm not you know, trying to upset out the big girls. fellow comedians. I'm not trying to do any of that, and I can't. I am qualified to be able to do none of that mm -hmm. and still eviscerate you because I'm smart enough words. to know that How I need to say that you have gnarled so fingers far. because I oh, know your limited education one. means you don't know what the word means. So you can't possibly respond to it. You're not sure of the meaning. And I'm going to continue hitting you because this is what comedians do. Right. You've been masquerading that you're a comedian too. And that's <laughs> the fallacy. So and nobody that, in boxing fights out of their weight class. If you're a 130 pounder, you don't just show up with the 160 pounders. You stay no, in your no. weight class. Is that what you wanted to do? No. That she was out of her league no. when it came to because I she, didn't want to do any of it. I, I know you didn't want, want to, to but what she took it there. You, did you feel that you had to go there? Oh, you could have You could have said, Wanda, I didn't come here for that. I just want to do the interview. Yeah, I just want to talk about what happened. Oh, you misunderstand my job. My, <laughs> my job is to be funny. Ha <laughs> ha! My job is to be funny first. My first job is to be funny. My yeah. second job is to be respectful. My third job is to be immaculate and Gaza strip it. Huh? Uh, That's non-political. I'm saying, if you do it, you let a terrorist accidentally touch over here. <laughs> and I won't stop burning you down until there ain't nothing left. It'll literally be rubble on top of rubble and I'll still be bombing. Why? Because that's why you should mind your business. This is what 
F around and find out. Look around about. and find right. out. I used to say come and learn. That's my tagline, y'all. Have you ever Talk been booed right cat? Included. Um. Yes. There you go. Get you some water, y'all. At least they practice and yeah. good practice with their drinking. Staying hydrated. What was that feeling like? Did it like yes, want to give up? Because we don't, I mean, because when you have, I mean, I don't know how early it was in your career. Oh, Obviously, Shane, it hadn't please. been in the, do I don't think it's in the last decade go, because you've been immaculate. <clears throat> have you ever dropped a pass? I have. I've been booed too. You know the little segment between everything is fine and I got it. And then you noticing where it is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that. Um, the thing about as a comedian, the audience's opinion is the only opinion that matters. Not mm -hmm. you, the writer, not none of that. And so I don't think any comedian has ever been booed unnecessarily either. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> they, des they deserve it. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying. I'm saying, what, what do they say when a guy shoots the air ball in the NBA? They say, air, air ball. ball. To make sure everybody knows. <laughs> but again, he still got to get back on D. Right. Like the game didn't end. He don't get to throw his hands up and sulk. Right. That's supposed to be used as a learning experience. Most comedians don't get booed enough. Mm. I mean, mm -mm. This is how you end Jay, up with a Michael Blackson who is a real oh. African doing a fake hey, African Jay. accent. Okay, move, don't. <laughs> this guy is mad at me. All I did was Damn. give him the best advice of his life. Remember, he was wearing dirty dashikis. Dashikis. And I told him he needed to dress to be he in the position that he's trying to say that he's on. in. And if you're the African king of comedy, sir, there's actually comedians in Africa off. doing comedy. If you're going to say you, that, you, you got to go to Africa and get a school, dude. Everybody got, you, you got to put in some work. And these these guys, they take my advice, they change their whole persona, and, and then they hate me for it. And generally, I'm just too big to comment or make a statement about it or do a live or any of that. But when it gets to be a whole grouping of these guys, I got to come and talk to Shannon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got to lay it down at the altar. <laughs> You know every comedian. This is, this is the other side of Kirk Franklin Prince. <laughs> <laughs> this is the reckoning. 2024. <laughs> the reckoning. This is it. You watch that. You know every comedian that's been on my show. You know you watched every episode. Cause no, you know, that's not what you said. You said I know every comedian. You know every comedian. You're sure. limiting me. <laughs> oh, you watched every episode. Because you 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 know things. You know things. I, that <laughs> that's always where I'm trying to come from, whether it's comedic or otherwise. That's why even if you see me get arrested 10 times in a row on TV, as a fan of mine, you can be like, he's going to be right out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they just say it. He didn't do it. He couldn't have. It's stupid. Why would he do something stupid knowing he got to come back and talk to us? Mm -hmm. That's why I always said every time no. he got rich, they, they respect the that every time it happens, I'm going to be free as a bird sitting out here talking to you about it, that it really was what I said it was. That's all. You end up, you come down, you're in L.A. Yeah. Now, I'm reading Cat Williams won Cedric the Entertainers and Heiser Bush Best, L L Best Los Angeles Comic Award. Did you win that award, won Cat Williams? Clearly. It's a simple yes or no. It's not a rhetorical question. Oh. It's a question that probably should have been asked to Cedric the Entertainer. I'm asking <laughs> you. I got you here, though. I know. I couldn't believe Cedric didn't get asked that question. I don't know. Why, why you didn't ask him? You still a dude's joke and then give him an award, and then 10 years later, you don't know nothing about it. <laughs> okay, but... Oh, no, that's Steve. <laughs> hey, but I, but I promise you this. What? If he sees me again... He gonna before bust he him in that you, stomach. <laughs> he'll be talking different when you see him. He gonna have That's, light don't touch you. That's the difference. That's what these comics understand, is that I'm not doing nothing for clout. I don't even recognize clout. What is clout? But eventually, the Lord is gonna let me and you be in one hallway. A lot of these dudes go 
Kevin Hart done went 25 years without ever being in the same building with me at the same time. What, so what's, if what's, I go in the building, he walk out. You've never seen us yo, in the same building Yo, hold on, hold on. This, 20... this got to be fate, y'all. <laughs> no lie. I am on my phone right, right quick as you know. I got a short attention span, y'all. I can't just be sitting here <laughs> and, and not doing nothing. And so why am I just scrolling through the gram, okay? And he's talking about Kevin Hart. And as soon as I see that, he says, Kevin Hart's ex-wife is on tour with Cat Williams. Lord have mercy. 2024 just finna be, like he said, the year of reckoning, y'all. Let's see what's going on. Oh, man. is this the, he on the, She on the dark matter, too. I'm gonna have to buy me a ticket, y'all. Let's see. It says, Tori Hart, Charlotte, Orlando Temple. Come see me with good friend Cat Williams on the dark matter tour. Yo. <laughs> Cat had this shit planned all along. He knew what he was doing, y'all. So I'm breaking it to y'all right now. Look at. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can see this or not. But y'all make sure y'all go to my Instagram, Third Eye Entertainment LLC, and follow me there as well. And <laughs> again. If y'all liking what y'all saying, hit that like and that share and definitely hit that subscribe button, y'all. We're going to get back into it. I just think it's so funny. <laughs> Can't do what the fuck he was doing. He had this plan for the jump. Let's go. Come and learn. Five years. Like, it's like that. <laughs> Why? Why? Yes. Because I'm boy. really the product. Mm -hmm. It's not what you think. I am never under the influence of anything. I'm always in my right mind. I'm always a physical specimen. And when you see me, I'm much, much bigger than you had thought. <laughs> I have far less play in me than you would like. Mm -hmm. And I'm relentless. I'm out there. I'm still to this day. I play 11 games of basketball with a 20 year old. The record is 92 and six. Come this on. is just uh, in the okay. yard, just to the Okay, until the receipt drop for this, I'm calling Cap like a mug. He, he was talking about he can run 4.2 and, 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 and run a 4.2, and he dropped the receipts for that, so I can dismiss that. But with this one, until the receipts drop, Cap like a mug, okay? Because you work out Cap? I mean, no, you work out Cap? Uh, not to the gym. You don't work out in the gym? <laughs> you push-ups, sit-ups? My whole life, it was, um, it was just push-ups and sit-ups only. I would do, like... Um, a hundred push-ups a day, just. I thought you were gonna say a thousand. Right, No, me no, too. no, <laughs> because this is literally every day. Right. This is right. not for the, yeah. Okay, for that's the believable. You know what I mean? Like, that. literally a hundred a day. And I would do push-ups, and then I tore both my rotator cuffs. Uh -huh. And so it was only thanks to golf that I was even able to get my- You a golfer now? Yeah, I've, I've I'm been tired. a golfer for I've been quite some time. My short game is impeccable. I, I, 15? I can't well, get you, but, but two and some change off of the- The off the tee, but I'm still I'm 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 still coming in for par guaranteed. Are you playing for the tips? Mm, that ain't sound uh, right. No, I I found <laughs> that you don't get tips. anything for that. <laughs> it seems uh, like it very seems good very good cat. <laughs> good, good, they good, go, hey, cat, for free. You can go further back. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> there, what? Wait a minute, does it still count the same? Hey, I'm up at the ladies' tee. Don't tell me my pronouns. <laughs> 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 On the golf course, I'm she, her, him, them, and they. Whoever, whoever at the front tee. We're, I know we're joking. We're having a great conversation. But you did win the award. How did the award help your career? It had to help some, cat. Nope. No. Nope. God, come on, Cat. I don't remember it happened to you. How many times do you think Shannon said that? How can Cedric comment, give you an award that was worth something? Everything Cedric and Ricky Smiley ever been in got canceled for not being funny. There we go, back to the, back to the, to the Ricky sat here and told you that they cut him out of every movie he did. They always had a reason, right? <laughs> <sighs> That's why I'm funny, because I'm a happy person. I laugh all day long. I can't even imagine the misery of these bums. Oh, Lord. <laughs> 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 Just to not be good at what you do, not work hard at what you do, but have to act like you're the best at what you do. Right. It is crazy. It's crazy. But they be touring, they they, they be doing like a hundred shows a year. They still make their money. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't run into none of them. 
That's what I'm saying. If you a phase on love fan, you mean you've been a fan of him for 32 years, you still waiting on him to do his first special? I'm, I'm you mean to tell you Steve Harvey, your favorite comedian, you mean you've been waiting for him to do stand up for 15 he ain't never been years funny. now? I've always fast forwarded. Kings of Comedy. I mean, Steve got, got, got a lot of DL, DL still out there. Mm-hmm. None of those really irons matter to stand up. Who cares that they wrote a plaque card for you to do Family Feud on? Like, you're, <laughs> you're successful because we're surprised you can talk for a living and it's entertaining that you're going to say some funny country things. Oh, but cable. <laughs> but not a writer. Right. Not a writer. How did you develop Money yeah, Mike violent. and get it? I mean, that, I mean, everybody talk Money Mike. Is, how? How did you come up with that and say, you know what? This is how he should dress. This is how he should talk. This is how he should look. This is the kind of whip he should ride. This is how he should talk. So if you'll remember that that was my first movie, just understand that what I did then, I've done with every single role, whether it was an Emmy-winning role or whether it wasn't, whether I was playing somebody homeless whether I was playing a dirty vagabond on Atlanta, (laughs) whether it was an eccentric guy in First Sunday, regardless of what the role is, the first thing I do is erase me from it. Okay. So anything that I would naturally do, Mm -hmm. that's what I'm not going to do because I'm playing a different character. You're playing a character, okay. Right. So I then create this person based upon real life circumstances. So I don't have to wonder what a pimp thinks because I've been in that position for a little while. Mm -hmm. I also worked manual labor for some time in my life. So I don't have a problem paying somebody that works. And I don't have a problem uh, being a go-getter because I'm a go-getter. So I bring whatever I I can to these characters. I was able to... Is it real? I um, can't tell. The first week that I got the script, there was a a pimp guy that used to be a pimp, but he wasn't anymore. He was a rapper now, and his name was Mac Minister, and he um, had been a pimp and was going to be a rapper. And I... I thought he was about to say Pastor Mac. ...had never done a movie before. I was a stand-up, and I'm getting ready to do the movie. And so I was able to craft what a real pimp was like what was too much i didn't want to be stereotypical right i i I did the research i saw how many times people played pimps and they were always it was always mm-hmm. something weird about them, right. I guess, because it's My a weird job. My favorite pimp you know played I mean? had to be And Richard I wanted Pye somebody that watch. didn't seem like none he of that. That, uh, he that he really pizza. thought it was a business Money and loves treated me. it like that. Money wants so, me to you know, have. those <laughs> adding those levels to acting is what all actors do if they're not Steve or Cedric or Ricky. Mm-hmm. Like, you're trying to create a character. You don't, you can't just be... F- Phase on in every movie. <laughs> like, you're just gonna take your shirt off on every movie. Oh, like, Lord. He did take his shirt off the money, in my, money. Man, talk. let Big Worm live. Let him breathe. Let, let him be, yo. He did let show me, the butt crack in the movie. Let Big Worm him out now. <laughs> Come on, cat. Sipping on You're the having yak. an unnatural allegiance to losers that's not like you. Hey, no, I ain't part. got no allegiance to the man. But you got to admit the role that he played, Big Wor- I mean, Big Perm in Friday Night. You got to give him credit for the role. Now, come on now. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Yes. If what you're saying is correct, why wasn't he in next Friday or Friday after next? I mean, his role, I mean... It wasn't he- good. <laughs> to be fair, he got Sorry. picked up on the parents. There was a lot of people he, he that that appeared in the first so, one that weren't in the second one. Cat, I'm just Bernie telling Mack, you why. Nia Long. Tony Cox. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it's a there's a news uh, flash that there are reasons for things in a business. Yes. Oh, will. okay. Well, <laughs> what would you? Why yeah, would you? Wilson, they took why, off. why did you bench D'Lo? He had two points. What are you talking about? <laughs> Shut up. But I like him. Nobody cares about that. That's not what we're talking about. These are business conversations that deal with businessmen. Right. Right. When you're good at something, you should progress. The guys that are not as good, they should fall down by the wayside. That's natural. They're where they, so you believe if your talent doesn't support it, you should fall by the wayside, and the guys that have the talent and they get elevated, they should move. No, that's what water says. Mm. That's what the universe say. The universe say the levels. Water can't talk. <laughs> the heavy, no, I don't. Not I say. Who am I? <laughs> I'm nobody. I, but I'm working every day. As if I think that's what should happen. 
is how right. it should be. And I'm choosing comedians that also write and work hard and don't steal other people's material. And I'm making sure that they all make $300,000 a, 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 a season. And I'm making sure that they're not ever well, signed to me or my conglomerate. And that's why they're successful. No, you can work with me and still be an independent businessman, boss owner like you came in. Right. I don't need you to be subservient to me. That's those other guys that make you pay dues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you said earlier that you rewrote a lot of what Money Mike was to say and how he behaved. So they allowed you the, 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 the freedom, the liberty to ad lib. How much? Would they allow you to just make an interception if it didn't nobody talk about it? As a football player, if the ball no, comes your way, can you just grab it? Football analogy. Can you make an interception any time? Are you allowed to pick up time. any fumble? Are yeah. you you can do any hustling, yeah. right? Oh, okay, same here, same here. But here's the thing, though. Not as a rookie. Even as a, even as an offensive player, yeah. they might let me add lib once I get a couple of years into my breath. They exactly. wouldn't let me add lib as a rookie. That was your first movie. I, I told you the conversation in my first movie just because I'm. I am committed to laughs. The only way I made it past those 300 comedians, I didn't tell you this. What it required is I had to watch all 300 comedians 10 times a piece. I watched your set 10 times of I it you was performing, whoever you were. And then I counted how many laughs you got every time you did these amount of minutes. So if you told me this, Ooh, yeah. uh, comedian oh, to and told me he did Damn. 30 minutes, I could tell you that he got 26 laughs in that 30 minutes because I had done the numbers on everybody. So I didn't just say I was funnier. I knew I was funnier than the comic you liked. And I could tell you how many jokes funnier I was because that's how we judge stand up. You do 15 minutes, I do 15 minutes. How do I know I'm funnier than you? Cause you got six laughs and I got 16. I'm almost three times better than you, low-key boy boy. Low but I'm never going to tell you the formula. So you're going to keep just going out there telling jokes. Now I understand it that I, psychologically, the audience by 10 years is convinced that I'm funnier than you. They just don't know why. Because I'm putting out more content, better. Actually, yes, that's right. I've, I I've had Terry Crews on here. He Kevin said Hart, at the time that you did he the has movie, more, you were more homeless. Content, is more that true? More content and, and his punchline is so much better. His delivery is so much better. Um, wow. This was my situation. I Five months prior to me getting this first audition for Friday After Next, I got this baby son. I'm holding him up above me. He grabs my little chain. He's playing with it and he accidentally drops it. It breaks out my front two teeth. Mm. I'm in a I situation now where when I go to the dentist, they telling me this gonna cost thousands and thousands of dollars to fix this right. They are not real. telling me what it's gonna look like. I go get an estimate with no money involved, find out what I need to do. They find out you got a tumor in your upper jaw, so we're gonna have to do a what whole surgery for you. It's gonna be a hundred bands. I don't have it. I don't have it. And um, I'm only gonna have this check from this movie. So while I'm doing this movie, we live in this trailer. Um, this is yeah. where we live. So, so basically, yeah, you were homeless. In the morning, we already there. When they leave at night, we still there. We just double back um, because we understood that this is our one opportunity. Um, and we have this opportunity to change our lives, just like a young man going for the draft. Right. We can actually get in the league with this. There are 30 comedians on this cast. They're all magnificent. This is the holy grail of the situation. Mm. Um, so yeah, I was able to make sure that, because it wasn't just my first movie, it was K.D. Albert's first movie, it was Terry Crews' first movie. Absolutely. I was the leader of this group, which meant that we did, we didn't do their rehearsals, they did rehearsal, we did our own rehearsals daily to make sure that we were at the level of professional actors, which is what made it so egregious, that guy. Agree. I was supposed to. You were supposed to. <laughs> How many big grades you use, y'all, so far? 
Let me know in the comments below. Candy did have a good part in the movie, man. The Santa, Santa Claus was funny, man. He was The dude funny. said the entire time we were filming, I can't play this role. They got a bandana over oh, my what? nose and my mouth. My son they not even going to know who this is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a minute, y'all. For argument's sake, he is right. I didn't know. I, it took me a while to realize that that was Ricky Smiley towards the end of the movie when you've seen him take a face mask off, and I guess he had to fight for that part. But that was the only time he didn't have his uh, face shown, as well as, I think, um, when he was running through the house or whatever. Um, but but any case, uh, yeah, that's very true. I didn't really know that that was Ricky Smiley until after or towards the end of the movie. But in in my in his defense, he did play a funny. It was a funny role, you know. He played a funny Santa Claus. So it was meant to be as me. I, I was meant to be as B. I say. And Cat Williams was meant to play Money Mike, and Ricky Smiley was meant to play, you know, the crackhead Santa Claus. It is what it is. <laughs> At least they still got paid, right? At least that check cleared. So hey, no harm, no foul. Ah. So yeah, tell your story. <laughs> <laughs> He's Ted. Uh, Ted Cruz also said that you guys had a lot of had a lot of conversation that this was your opportunity and you needed to seize this moment. Mm -hmm. Terry had the benefit of having been in some very high How many profile took so situations far? already and took L's. Mm -hmm. Like he had been in the league, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He he, over there. he had um, done pro wrestling. He had done a lot of things. He had been televised and some things that hadn't worked. Right. And this was just fortuitous for him. And now you know what nobody has ever said in the whole industry in 20 years about, you know, the whole money might not get raped in the bathroom. Right. So I understood going in that. There's no reason. I lost every, for a five-year period, every single movie that Kevin Hart did was a movie that had been on my desk that all I had said was just, can we take when some is of this stuff and fetch shit out? And uh, then I'm I can have to do go. it. Like, it don't need to be overtly homosexual because I'm not homosexual, right? It doesn't need that right. to be funny, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and me saying that and them going, oh yeah, no problem. And then going to give it to this other guy and having him do it just like it was and acting like I'm a bad person because I keep standing on my standard. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's interesting, but I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Like, again, I'm, I'm on the winning side of these <laughs> decisions. You know, look, I've had Cube, I've talked to Cube, and a lot of people say Cube don't, doesn't pay. What's your relationship with Cube and what did that opportunity mean for you? Well, the ungrateful bastards that would say anything about Cube's <laughs> payment, you shouldn't even talk to them anymore. Like, you don't, you don't go to Goodwill, you don't go to a Goodwill thrift store and go, look at all this cheap ass shit. <laughs> don't you shut up. Why don't you shut up? You could have went to Hermes. Why you didn't go to Balenciaga? Why you didn't get a boat of the ball man? I go to the uh, good What you mean, the independent nice black dude like who's filming it wood, um, partly out of his Woodland fucking Dahi pocket? What you mean yeah. he didn't pay you enough? They weirdos. Weirdos. That felt like they earned the opportunity because they were big. No, no. Yeah. I understood. That ain't no $200 million dollar movie. Well, I mean, how much did you expect you was going to make? Well, I made enough to get them teeth fixed just like you did. Yeah. <laughs> you got so a bag I, to fix the teeth. Pause. Hold up. <laughs> Let's go back here really quick. I want y'all to see what I'm seeing here, y'all. Uh, what I do. What I do, y'all. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm saying, if I did it and I did a good job at it, you can thank me. I was involved. Right. I'm not gonna come later on and tell you, I never even read the whole script. <laughs> so how you know what Rose, what? What do you mean you never read the whole mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, these guys' whole job is to present something, unfortunately. And I'm just not a presenter. If you ask me a question, I'm just going to tell you the truth of how it went. Would you be willing to do another Friday? Cube already asked me to write it. I was supposed to have been writing it. That's This is what these guys are mad about. Like, 
Okay, hold up. Now, Ice Cube has spoken out on the, uh, on this interview, and he did validate Cat on some things, but he did not validate him on him asking Cat to write the. Uh, I guess would be the fourth installment of Friday. And so uh correction on that, but he didn't, you know, dismiss it either. And so that's neither here nor there, I will say, but he didn't call him a liar. That's one thing about it. And so nobody ain't called him a lie yet. So as you say, he might tell you a joke, but he'll never tell you a lie. So to speak. <laughs> I don't know we about lost that. some great people you before know, this movie. Reading 3,000 books a day. Out. Come oh, no. out regardless. Right. And so, oh, yes, know, they're, they're, whatever desperately needs to be one um, um, but um, we miss John Witherspoon in a way that can't really be quantified right. if I'm being honest with you and um, the Chris Tucker that we got now is Epstein Island Chris Tucker no it's smoky not Chris his name wasn't on that list he was not Ooh. on that list. <laughs> if I didn't know no better, but I'd hey. tell you, he's the greatest. I hey. don't care what you say. No, so we don't, huh? <laughs> well, I'll wait for that receipt to drop, To too. be confident and not delusional is a real skill. Most of these confident people we see is really delusional. Well, you don't think you don't think they asked Chris Tucker to come back in the second, in the snack, in the second Friday? Smokey, Smokey was all in fr Smokey. There ain't no Friday without Smokey. We all agree to that. And there's no right. next Friday without Friday. And there's no Friday after next without nah, Friday. Nah, we talk about the road because you said that they don't Here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. Chris was allowed to make the decision. At the time that this is happening... Cat Williams is known for smoking weed. Willie Nelson is known for smoking weed. Right. Snoop's known for smoking <laughs> weed. But none of us is really known except Willie. And I'm saying, Chris Tucker didn't want to be the poster child for smoking weed. He don't right. smoke weed like right. that. Right. He in the church. Him and Ricky he, his Michael Jackson's boy. best friend. Now, uh -uh. Michael Jackson called him Christmas. He used to. You, you don't talk about and, Mike. Yeah, you little Cat, nickname you, like that? No. Strike one, mm, right? Strike two, because you know, already brought him up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> talking about my boy Mike. Now, what if he used to That's call Chris good. Tucker Christmas? It's Man, okay. I ain't gonna be able to get nobody back. Or I ain't gonna be able to get no yeah. more comedians. They all coming. <laughs> no, they ain't. Are you kidding? Yeah. Nah. Yeah, hey, I a promise good you. I got all the I, rest of them. I don't got, got the ones. Every, I promise you, everybody trying to double back. You're gonna <laughs> right. be able to beat them off with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> you won't let him. They're coming. <laughs> Much as. <laughs> you on Def Comedy Jam, Comic View? What were those experiences like? What do you What do you remember most about Dev Comedy Jam and Comic View? Uh, Comic View was everything. Um, Comic View was really the break, um, and not Friday after next, just because Comic View was just I've never seen three thousand of your before, stand up. Uh, I never knew that. That's how you got started. I always thought it was that you know, all funny Mike was his first, very and first. And we'll who the audience TV likes, role, which was true. Who do they I like? Never from Comic View. And um, it was a great wild, wild west time to be involved in comedy and. Um, the same is true for Def Jam because uh, hip hop was a fad at one time. Hip hop ain't gonna last, and why are you doing that? Um, and that's how it was for blue comedy. Mm -hmm. um, if you were a comedian that cussed, you were ridiculed by the mainstream comedy mm -hmm. geist. That would be like me being on Joe Rogan. Joe don't want me on that. I need to be on Shannon. Joe, Joe got Joe, six comedians yeah. that never been funny. He want to push out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's really you how it is. I'm so sorry I'm competitive. That. You an athlete, right? You yeah, yeah, I, I can tell. You understand. Will there ever be another comic new, Def Comedy Jam? Can, could, could that in today, in 24, 25, 26, could we see that again? They've already announced it. It's already going. You didn't know? Mm -mm. Yeah, Kevin Hart purchased it, so he's now doing uh, mm -hmm. Comedy View. That, that happened at the same time that they gave DC Young Fly uh, Hollywood Squares. Where? I live yeah. under a rock. Because that they tell you that there's no gatekeepers, but we keep seeing the same people open the gate. Mm -hmm. Didn't Kevin open the gate and let Tiffany in? Now she, and he she now was here opening before him. I remember her back Don't in. Don't such uh, and such open the gate. What, what, was that? what do you mean ain't no gatekeepers? 
was every that's oh, a baby. He was here. on Pimp My Ride. Mm-hmm. I, I, everyone I've seen Kevin. got a keeper. Would you have wanted to do Comic View or Def Comedy Jam? Would you have wanted to be? I, I think we just mentioned I did them both. Right. No, I'm saying. Ooh, shut. Purchase the rights ba, ba, and ba, ba, ba. refranchise it. Nope. They didn't offer it to me anyway. <laughs> you sound like a mad uh-huh. little kid. Like, Comic View did a couple of disservices to comedy as well. Mm-hmm. So there were people like me that were out there getting two and three standing ovations in one set. And that wasn't good for television. So what they did was they started making everybody get a standing ovation. So they would tell the audience, when they get off stage, everybody get up and cheer. And so now the fact that I'm the only one out there going to get standing ovations is now making people think everybody get a standing ovation. Mm. And that's not how comedy is. So I I understood why that couldn't go anymore. Because remember, Ricky Smiley sat right here and told you a story about how he performed with uh, Mike Epps and Cat Williams when he did Comic View. And to let him tell it, he was funnier than both. Where did that lie from? My name Lil Dow. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> talking what about did, the special needs Ooh, well hey weird. wait a minute that's a different that time, that, time level yeah. that was a different time uh-huh. camp no it wasn't yeah, it yeah. was the time I was there uh-huh. but I'm saying that time this time same times no but I'm saying just th- like people that tell you the Egyptians they not black yes, they were. Egypt is in Africa folks exactly yeah. as long as Egypt is in Africa then Egyptians are African do you believe you could tell the same jokes today as when you started out. I mean, Eddie Murphy not telling those jokes. Richard Pryor not being able, wouldn't be able to tell those jokes in 2024 that they told in the 70s and the 80s. True. So they wouldn't have told them. But that's my point. They're not inferior people. No. If they were in this time, they would be going according to our time. Just like then, we were going according to that. Like, that's how it is in the world. There are words that we can use for a while. And when we use them for a while until somebody says, that ain't a good word, yeah. we should stop saying that. Correct. That don't make people feel good. And we stop saying the word. And we move on to another word. You can't say the R word. You can certainly say special needs. Yeah. You can certainly say spectrum. Be slow. You can, you can, you, there are things that you can say to get your point that don't have to hurt people. Right. But you would know that if what you did was construct the English language for a living. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then you would understand that part. You financed your first stand-up. You had 20, it cost you 22 thousand you had 25 to your name yeah. what why did you decide to do that you you believe you you believe that much in cat i believe that much in business mm-hmm. in business the goal is for you to become independent and be the boss take the responsibility Facts. and also get the profit okay and in order to you know want people to take That's you all. serious you gotta take yourself how, serious how, you how can i be looking for you to put me on if i wouldn't go. And if I can't show you what you missed out on, why would you believe me? Now, the fact that I was able to do it 12 times, that's the real thing. The thing, the part that I'm able to do it all across the country. The fact that every time I do a tour or a special, you think, well, that's sponsored by somebody. Somebody did a good job. No, no, just... Just the guy they're kicking around. Just the one who might mentally not be all there. He's the one picking the outfits, writing this guy's material, booking the shows, making sure he gets there. He's the one hiring the other comedians. He's, but hey, I knew that that's the end goal. So if that's the end goal and I'm there when I start, why would I deviate from that? Right. Remember, I, 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 my goal was to get this far in Hollywood and still have a virgin asshole. <laughs> and Gotta I protect that virgin hole. <laughs> that was my only goal. I didn't want to get with a white woman because I was scared she might have me running down the street like Jonathan Man, you gonna be, come on, come on Cam. Cam. There you Not go. because come I didn't on, like Cam. white women. I think white women are as great as any other women. But I'm not gonna that. act like I'm not scared of them. I have a reason to be scared. You, be. you could be Kang the Conqueror and they could take your rabbit ass down in two weekends. Uh, uh. And that's the truth of the matter. So I stayed away from that. And remember I told you the drug story from when I'm in the park. Yeah. So these are just the things. I had all of those when I came in. I already was ready for that. 
That's what they don't like. I did not know you. Sh you're telling me and showing me a side of the business that I, I didn't know. All of us. <laughs> that you guys are, comp man, the competition, the competitiveness. That's all business. I don't care if they're selling Coke. You wouldn't believe the things that Coca-Cola says about Pepsi. You wouldn't believe the water conversations between Dasani and Liquid Death. Like in no, all business, in all sport, that, from there. competition is a driving force. And I don't require anybody to be better. Who am I? I just require if you're a loser and you've taken shortcuts at every chance and you've made sure that you didn't put anybody on that really had a work ethic and was a God-fearing person and you helped it. <laughs> if that was never you, then don't act like that's you. Mm -hmm. Don't get out here now that you don't do stand up and start acting like, oh, you're not sure why you don't do stand up no more. <laughs> I heard you got run off. You better be careful the nigga that run you off gonna show up and he gonna tell everybody. I mean, what you gonna be able to say? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Why you think I speak with such clarity? I'm actually involved in each one of these stories I told you about. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. And he got the receipts, <laughs> obviously. Well, the think about the internet, they're going to go find We've been sitting here it. doing this interview that you hold in very high regard as Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle walked away from 50 million. Mm. You said it was more. Tell the story. That's right. I'm going to let you tell it. No, you're. you're no, the best. I want you to tell it. You really are the best. You're proving it here today. <laughs> as much as I'm proving it, you're proving it. <laughs> you're proving it. Um, yeah, that wasn't the thing. It wasn't. People say that. He lost $50 million. No, no, that's not even close to what happened to this dude. And until you understand what happened to the dude, you don't understand what happened. Like, no, not they offered him $50 million and he turned it down. Who gonna turn down $50 million? Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Mm. I'm gonna need to see the receipts, cat. Just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole oh, I was no. <laughs> Right, because uh, P. Diddy be wanting the body. Oh, and damn. you got to tell him He's no. He's not looking good. Oh, you got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. On, See, man. I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I just say I'm so freely. Can, 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 I need, can I need another one? You, here, get your another one, too, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Because early on, you was accusing me of being... Cat, man. Cat. Yeah, 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 it's crazy. I mean, but you know, some of these people... Martin tried to put me in my first dress. Oh, well, yeah. When he had to go on his hiatus, like, he tell me, Kat, when I come back, I need you. You're my young partner. You're my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie, it'll be me and you. We're going to do it together. He was supposed to We're do, gonna uh, do some buddy cop shit. I said, Martin, Big Mama's you got three. my motherfucking word, my nigga. Go do what you got to do. When you come back, I'm in your movie. Don't trip. I don't need to see the script or nothing. You know we get in that office and this fool pull out <laughs> Yo, call Big Mama's house Martin too. Martin the fool. Okay, well, let me say this, y'all. I almost died. Let me say this. Okay, for Martin and, 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 and Eddie, they came up in a different time. And, and from their perspective, they created their female characters. They and Tyler Perry, too. And so the industry didn't come to them telling them, hey, put on a dress. They came to them with these characters and capitalized on it at the time, at a time, you know, in the culture where, you know, Martin had it, had us on the chokehold with Martin's show, you know, with Sinead and Mama Payne. I don't give a damn what you say. He, those were his best characters, Sinead and, and, and Mama Payne. Um, in Big Mama's house too, man. And then also what he said for him is it, strictly the money as well as with Eddie. You know, hey, I don't know about with Eddie, but with Martin, I, I can feel that since he all about his paper and he always has been. And so for with that, I say for him and, and, and Eddie Murphy, their situation, although they are, you know, men in dresses, they not being forced. They didn't do the ritual. You know, this is they, they characters that they created and that they capitalized on and was able to make a household name for themselves off of it. And so um, with that, I, I can't even say like uh, uh, that's with them that Illuminati, you know, uh, crap or whatever you want to say, you know, hey, some of it's true. I, you know, I will say, you know, some of it's what they're saying, you know, it's starting to be true or sounding like it's true. If it's more than one person saying it, then hey, something got to be true about that theory, right? But with that being stated, I don't think, in my opinion, now again, this is my reaction video, y'all. I don't think uh, Martin or Eddie uh, 
or even Tyler for that matter, but with Tyler, he's on a different little path. He came in later on in life, but again, with these two men and in the time frame that they came up, they, I don't think they were approached. If they were, and I, I, just, I don't think they were, you know, Martin's characters, that those were his characters that he, he created, and so, um, yeah, they, they, they not a part of that Illuminati, you know, dress culture and everything, I don't think, and so, with that being said, y'all, let's get back into it. We got over an hour to go, y'all. And I gotta read good. this script from all these good white people. Oh, Lord. Where this nigga want me to get in a dress with oh, him. No, and I'm nigga. literally saying to everybody, why is he in a dress again? Okay. You already played the old lady as an FBI agent. We can play anything now. You we can be playing money. a dog catcher this time. Why do we need to be in a dress? And I get so mad, I say, you don't want me. You want Brandon T. Jackson. And that's who they went and got. Twice I said it, they went and got him. Just like I'm telling you, I had that other dude's work. I had all of it. All I did was say, I want to punch it up so it's not offensive to real niggas. And mm. that's how I got in this position. <laughs> I sure hope I have a uh, club Shay Shay after this here. Oh, don't worry. You ain't going nowhere. It's going to be in a dimension that's never been. Yeah, it's going to be. A, it's gonna be <laughs> the greatest thing floating. I might be out of business. Of no way. <laughs> yep. In a in a whole different realm of business. <laughs> Oprah coming next. Oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> <laughs> Once I establish this as a place of truth. Yeah. Oh wow. yeah. Watch. Watch. God's people ain't that few. Yeah. <laughs> Prince. <laughs> you met Prince. Uh huh. Alright, he's a friend of mine. He's a friend of mine. What was those conversations? Because he's, look, I mean, sometimes we don't really re understand or, or appreciate someone until they're gone. I did. I was a big Prince fan. All of his stuff. <laughs> yeah. Because he could play all the instruments. He could sing. He could dance. Come he on, was man. an entertainer. Do something with yeah, your camera code. And what he wrote, I mean, who thinks of Cherry Moons? Who thinks it snows in April? Who oh, had a raspberry beret or, or, or pink beret. cashmere? The thing, the purple rain, the things that he wrote about. Like, bro, who who mind goes there? Yeah, he was um he was like any unlike anybody in the world. Um he he was um he was just an amazing individual. I I was able to meet him when I was twelve and I knew him um my entire life through all of his changes. I was able to um assist him many times. If you go look at Prince's car collection, you'll see that Prince don't have not one car Cat Williams ain't got. Mm. He got the Prowler from Friday after next sitting there. He got the same Bentley as me. I've like, always because we share Casey certain Park, things. Though. Our our connection was lyrics, musical lyrics, his car collection. Um, women and cars. Mm -hmm. And that's those are the areas where he trusted uh, mm -hmm. my opinion on things. And um, that's where I got to be helpful in his life. And he was helpful in mine in um, really all different types of ways, especially about the business as far as being a black man that was rich in this business at 18 years old, had already did his first million dollar contract, had already broken records, was determined that he didn't want to be like anybody else, was so great of a guitar player that black people just stopped caring about guitar <laughs> and he got left out on a limb and somehow still had to create his way out of that. He was just really a, a, a one in a billion type person. I was lucky to know him. Now, there are specials and the streaming. Um, I don't know. I don't think there's as many and there's no DVDs now. So where, so, so where, where no, are you on this, the streaming, uh, the specials? That's why I, just said I mean, obviously you, you still tour, but how much do you focus on, okay, I'm going to tour, say 100 days or 150 days, but I'm going to do a special. Well, now that our relationship with Netflix is at the eight figure mark. Damn, you um, ain't got a break. Eight? How? How you said eight? How often you want to make them? How you you yeah, said eight? Yeah, I mean, like, like five, five, six, five, seven, six, seven, eight? Got to be 10 million to qualify, yeah. So what I'm saying is, once you're at that level, how many would you do? I, 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 I'd be willing to bet you say, Shh. <laughs> every time you turn around, I'm going to be doing another one. Hey. I think that's what you would say if you was any good. Yeah, and like sure. I said, like I said, 
with 12 comedy specials. Why do I need to be in these conversation with these specialist people? Say it ain't got no special you remember. Steve ain't got no special you remember. Ricky ain't got no special you remember. <laughs> Faison ain't got, got no. What? So why do y'all get special? Me? Yep, it was 20 minutes long. It was good too, though. It was. He's good. Not it was good. He's yeah, good. Yeah, see, that quite my guy. He's good. Don't think because I said something um, a derogatory that I I don't I don't know how to hate. Earthquake has consistently. I don't think anybody's ever said Quake wasn't funny. He, yeah, Quake he probably funny. never been funny. booed. Yeah. I don't think. I don't think he's ever given a bad performance. They thank you, my life. dog. But, but um, but his yeah. just dude sipping was on the over egg, y'all. He what's, was in a whole different what's, situation. What number yeah. is this on the chart? Because he wasn't able to translate the stand-up to the movie Movies thing, TV. he took a hit. Most people don't take a hit. They're just judged on their stand-up. Right. So, yeah, no. I, 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 even though it sounds like there's a lot of people I don't, that's not the Sorry case. I, I am a, I'm a proponent of all of us who are in this business working hard trying to make it. When you got into stand-up, was crossing over, was doing TV, was doing movie, was that a, was that a part of it? You're like, okay, I'm, gonna do, I, I'm doing stand-up, okay. Next, next, the, the next the progression is, is yeah, TV movies. Throughout, throughout the history of stand-up, sir. That's, that's the goal for all of us. That's how it goes. Mm -hmm. That's why when you hear these dudes talking about, oh, I didn't want to be a movie star. You just know it's disingenuous. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? He just could not get dude? off of <laughs> Yeah, oh, no, no. I just wanted to do a game show. Right. What? Stop lying. Are you sure? Are you sure? Because I thought you did Mark Curry's show over after he had just done hanging with Mr. Cooper. Yeah. Why would you do all of that man's stuff that he did on his show on yours and Mark then Curry do the dude stand up? Said, yeah. Mark Curry said he did <laughs> Go on the road. Yep. And then you never put Mark Curry on your show or nothing. Like, if you don't say anything, these dudes will run over you. I don't know if you know how bullies operate. Steve Harvey, do. Has if you yet don't to stand respond, up for yourself, I just want to put that out there. There really is Everybody nothing they won't do. Except right. for Steve. You're a very generous man, Kat. Uh, you, you're the sole sponsor of Melba Moore, getting <laughs> hey, a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You, you did all that on your own. Why? What, do you I have a personal her, relationship with Melba? She went through a lot of shit, man. No, no. Her ex-husband um, was a real true pig. I, I understood that she was a black woman in a time where mm -hmm. It mattered what you look like, and they had a certain thing that they needed you to look like and act like in order to be successful. Right. And she no, just never fine. did that. She wasn't tall enough. She wasn't fine. Uh, they didn't like her looks. They didn't like that her hair was natural. They talked crazy about her, and yet she still made all of these achievements. And I'm like, understand, I'm already in the Comedy Hall of Fame. I'm already going to heaven no matter mm. what happens. If it ends in a second, I'm up there. Mm -hmm. So it gives me the leeway to do some things that are simply because it's the right thing to do. There you go. So the truth Thank of the matter is man. they wanted to give me a star. But please don't consider me and this, this person been sitting on this list this whole time. Mm -hmm. And just because they ain't got enough money, they can't get they just do? What you talking That's about? crazy. When do you start? That, that's hurtful. What if somebody can't afford their flowers? You mean they don't get them? No, God don't operate like that. He would send a dummy like me to come and take care of that. There just you go. so that the right thing happens. That's how the universe works. There you go. Because remember, I was, what am I spending my money on? I'm not spending my money on strippers. Good, yeah. I ain't spending them on drugs. Why not? Like, said, what? Why not? Because if I go in a <laughs> if I go in a strip club, I'm only trying to get her out of there. Yeah. I have no intention of her or any other people being in this position. If I see a girl I like at the strip club, I'm telling her, you know, you don't have to strip no more after this. Oh no. Don't cat. Don't tell it's me you're being too good trying to stay the hoes. How about that? Uh uh, Janice, with the octave. What would it be like just to leave it all? Uh uh. You ain't gotta be a hoe no more. I don't even want you to go get your purse. Just leave it. And we get new ID. We get new ID and credit card and social security card. We don't need none of that. None of that. None of that. 
Mm-hmm. You, this life don't, don't look good on Don't be Captain Save a whole cat. Can't save you don't even look like a drug got, addict. Got me thinking. Got me thinking, <laughs> cat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you hear these athletes talking about, yeah, we was out there tricking. The- oh, what? No. Why? You're part of the problem. You're part of the problem. Stop paying people that you don't have no respect for. Exactly. Quit paying motherfuckers are trying to, you know, it convince sets motherfuckers it up they don't like you to be your friend. It's, and we got women out here can't, can't find a man because they acting like him. Mm. You are alpha. Yes, I am. Now the alphas all want these subservient husbands. You can't have one. No. Hold up. Time out. Flag on the motherfucking flag. Okay. Now, as an alpha female, a proud alpha female, I will state this for the record. I have no problem letting a man be a man in the relationship, nor am I looking for a subservient man. I don't like weak men. I like a man who can hold his own and still take care of his woman. With that being said, I, 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 I vow to, in my next relationship, to, you know, not to dim my light, but be more, you know, vulnerable to my man and <laughs> in private, not in public. But, um, with that being said, that's not true, Kat. I will dismiss that notion right here and there. Not all alpha females are looking for a subservient man or want to be a man. I love what I got. And so, uh, as well as that being said, yeah, I don't agree with that. So, I think that's probably about the only, you know, couple, one thing that I disagree with them on with this interview. So, with that being said, let's get back to it, y'all. Come and learn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, happen. some women want to be a man, but not Sorry me. about that. Okay, go ahead. Boy, you done got me canceled. How many times in this program? About 50 R- times. Where's the camera? I didn't write nothing. I said tonight. It's all been on these cue cards. And I'm just going to keep reading them. <laughs> Ask your next question. Uh, hmm. The Migos. Do you help them get out of financial situation? I mean... Everybody was broke at once, so hey. And I seen they. I don't think we ever, as a nation, can remember a time that the Migos were financially unsuccessful. So, for the record, I would assume that they've never needed Cat Williams' financial assistance for anything. I'm sure that between QC, the label, and other things, they were taken care of. On the other hand, if I was given the opportunity to help them, would I? Of course I would. Excuse That's me, what I do. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm a pro-black non-racist. <laughs> like, That's me too. I you. really, really love black people, but yeah, I, I don't like love them people. more than you other people. My people. I love but, everybody. You know, I just, I'm a black you know, guy. Everybody, I, I, everybody I, I, got to be stick with that, attention. But, you know, um, yeah, that I, ain't what that be is. I'm, I'm not one of those uh, pillow talkers either like when i do something good mm-hmm. i'm really not doing it for the gram it's not it's not for sorry not y'all. for any of that I really i'm am just doing it because it's good to do i appreciate that almost two hours i, I read i don't know if this show. is true but i did read that comedians on your show say that women sometimes would bring them money and not say where it came from mm-hmm. say that again comedians would say women would bring them money and not say where it came from. Uh, right. So um, I'm not a feminist like um, a feminist would be, mm-hmm. but I do believe that there are no there that in my camp. Like if I had 35 people in my camp, right? right. I believe that other than four jobs, I believe that a woman is better at any of them jobs than any man could be. Okay. So mm-hmm. 10 of these jobs, no man can work because I'd rather a female be there. If I got to smell anybody's breath, I want it to be hers. I don't <laughs> want none of you crusty. Like I, so, so what I'm saying is it, it, in a staffing issue, I'm going to have 75% women just because I prefer them. Right. I, I don't prefer to hear two guys talking in the corner. I prefer to hear two ladies talking in the corner. I don't care what they're talking about. I just prefer that. So a lot of times I will utilize ladies to convey a message if a comedian is doing a great job um, somewhere in the country he he just did a masterful set and nobody's gonna pay him they just clapping and I know he's broke as shit back there wouldn't it be nice if somebody just showed up and gave him a little blessing Mm-hmm. And he didn't have to suck me off. Oh for no! Thanks, cat. <laughs> Hello, cat. Really needed it. Uh uh-uh. uh. 
Why would you do that? If you was actually just trying to help people, you would. People know that's how I pay my tithes. If I got paid $100,000 to be at your Jesus city, on the main line. I'm going to take 10000 of that and put it in your homeless area. Not because I got to. Because you gave me a hundred racks to come to your little rinky-dink town. Who so would I be to not like pay my tabs cat? back to your town? That's how I got in this position. Let me see how we doing on the stream, y'all. Wow. We still going good. You adopted seven kids. That was beautiful. Wow. Of Coming up in foster care. That's a lot of kids. Uh, I won't for say a man that's as busy as you are, travels as much as you do, on the road as much as you are, spend a lot of time I because you have to spend a lot. I mean, it's not easy. I mean, maybe it comes just so comes so natural to you to put pen to paper and to write things down and be able to go out there and perform a set. But that's a lot of responsibility, Kat. Right. Right. But if there was a God, what would he think about you if you did that? There is a God, okay? God is real. Hold on now. I'm saying let's just let's, let's say let's for make example, that, clear. Okay. that God is real. Yes. Okay? He is, yes. And let's say he be looking at what you do. Yes. Mm -hmm. What would he say if you did that? He said that cat, that's that's a very that's a very kind gesture. That's very generous no. of you. My whole life, since I was telling you when I was young and they was asking me what I wanted to be and nothing I wanted to be was what <laughs> I wanted to be God's friend. That's a weird thing if you're an atheist. If you're yeah. an atheist, I didn't even say nothing. But if I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> Apropos of this conversation, what he just stated about atheists, not, 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 not taking the dibs at you guys. I had a friend once who was an atheist in me. I won't say I'm a religious person, but I do believe in God and I have a spiritual side to me. And so with that being said, people who have you know, or faith, you know, have faith in Christ or, you know, people of the faith uh, and people who are atheists, they don't last long as friends or, or lovers. I'm just put that out there. If, if any of y'all out there have, you know, that friend, you know, on the opposite side, let me know and drop that comment and how that working out for you guys. Yeah. And again, you guys, don't forget, hit that like, share, comment and subscribe button for your girl. I appreciate you guys tuning in and rocking out with me for my first reaction videos. Don't forget, drop the comments, the tips and how to help me in uh, getting better uh, with these reactions reaction videos and what I can do uh, this is my first one and yet the longest one while I promise you I won't be doing a long interview uh, review like this one again okay all right but let's get back into it y'all we almost there let's go if you believe, believe in God and I tell you that I wanted to be God's friend and I wanted to even go to Hollywood and still be God's friend if I told you that that was my aim you can understand where I'm at. Like, <laughs> I, I promise you, I, no jealousy, no bitterness, no, none of that. I got exactly what I was trying none to none get. I haven't been shorted in any way. I mean, seven, eight kids, single. You gonna get married? You, you remember the conversation yeah, you know. where I was, where it was me? Yes. And I didn't know what was going to happen to my two little brothers. And yeah. it was just going to be out you know, there. Yes. Redirected that question, though. Missed it. So when it gone Move full circle cat. and I'm one, of the, I'm one of the richest men that ever lived. And I don't, I don't, I don't mean, please don't look at my net worth. I saw my net worth. I, I had that on me. I swear to God. <laughs> what I'm uh -uh. saying is, like, <laughs> damn, every time I keep trying to stop it, they want to switch it off of share. I'm saying, get it my net worth is less than my last Netflix deal. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm telling Make you? Make it make sense. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm fine. No, I'm Jesus was poor. Jesus ain't had nothing. So why don't we be mad? You say I don't have nothing. They had the minutes they have back then, okay? Say it again. We got different amenities now. No, not more than gold. Gold was the amenity of that time. We still got gold. <laughs> gold still run it. They have the Rolls Royce. They got a, you. You can buy. You can buy an ass. That's what they call it in the biblical time. That's a donkey, cheap. by the way, for those who don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, if you really want to, say, I'm saying a color man is cheap. So yeah, back in the day, man. I would get my girl a donkey. Today, we get her a color man. But I'm saying, whoever, whoever, I'm saying whoever, whatever it is, I'm saying man? we. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, I'm saying because what we gonna do? 
I done already told you, I'm one of the richest people that ever lived. Yes. Only in the fact that when I wake up in the morning, no matter where I am, I don't need nothing. Whatever I need is right around me, and whatever I don't have, it's mm -hmm. only just because I don't have it. It's not because I can't get it. All I got to do is want it, and it belongs to me. So because of that, because I'm favored by God, like when I see people's Amen. wives and stuff, I don't even look at them. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't want to look at nothing I don't want to have mm. because I, I know how blessed I am. If I look at it, I got it. <laughs> That's how Diddy be feeling. Oh, damn. Come on, cat. <laughs> there you go. There you go with the sipping. So sipping you're not supposed head. to look at anything that you don't want. Not me personally, just because God has given me literally everything I ever even pump faked like I want. And uh, that's the whole thing. That's, that's the whole thing is I don't, I don't have a type of woman. Every woman that I ever had as a type, I ended up getting her. Now she's not the type anymore. Now I understand that every woman is a one of one. Like you can't really have types. Hmm. Mm-hmm. What? Cause he, see, I tried to ask me something about marriage, uh, but then I, I ain't say nothing about no marriage. Yeah, you did. When you rewind the tape, you you let it out. You was like, so are you ever gonna get married? And then you took it back. It's okay. It's okay. I, are you? I, I, I wasn't known as a photographic are memory. Are you? <laughs> I'm not against it. Like most people that are not married is because they're afraid of commitment. It's me not either. that like that and for me. It's I, just I, I'm not saying I got a problem. <clears> the whole time I, I wanted do, to be married, I, I had kids, so I had to oh, no. try to fill my wife's place before she got there. So right. I'm already got kids without a mother, but so now I, I got to be doing laundry. I'm, I'm washing dishes. I'm reading stories. I mean, I'm having to nurture. I'm having to do all of this, and I got to the point where I didn't need the wife. If I'm doing it and we're doing it and I'm not replacing a woman in their lives, I'm letting them see that that's just the only thing that we don't have. And um, it was easier for me to do that because you have to understand that all of the kids I'm raising at this point, mm -hmm. they have fathers. Mm -hmm. You see? They have a mother. Mm -hmm. You see? I'm a different person. I'm raising. Um, okay, so I don't know what he mean by that. It's a little confusing. Maybe that's the yak. Okay, we just gonna blame that on the alcohol, y'all. Yeah, keep it moving. Work Sorry in as that. well. So yeah, um, I, I never had a problem getting married. I... <clears throat> What's one of the one things you try to teach your kids? I don't teach anybody anything that's over eighteen. I've done <laughs> the work I was gonna do, but. As kids, I really just tried to teach um, the things that can't be bought, um, your integrity, um, trying to live your life in a way that you yourself could be proud of if you had to look back on it. And um, um, I didn't do very good at leading by example, but behind the scenes, I was, that, that's never what I was pushing. Um, um, they understood that. I think he <clears throat> means by you know fighting because of my stance. Getting into legal There was a certain thing that would come my way, mm -hmm. and so example. accountability <laughs> and responsibility is part of what you're teaching. Is right. that you know even if you're doing the greatest thing in the world, there's this thing called no good deed goes unpunished. Hey. Like there's a real Murphy's law, like. Uh, basically, in yeah, raising kids, you're just here, trying yeah. to give well. them a better yeah. manual and an outline of how life works than your parents can give you. you know? And so, um, that's how I did it. How do you avoid toxic women? And like, men. Give me, give me, give me. I mean, well, I so, I mean cause obviously, yeah. you know, he like women. Yeah, he liked I the do. women. And I probably like toxic ones more than God anybody. Dang. That's because... <laughs> i ask you this. Hold on. Because toxic <laughs> okay. women are exciting. And that's just a fact. Part of toxicity Go is exciting. <laughs> I'd rather skydive <laughs> with her. Uh, uh, but, but, but if you have toxic women, just understand that all monsters are feeding off of something. Hmm. And if you find out what... The, this toxic woman is feeding off of, you can just begin to turn off her feeding points. 
and it drives a toxic person crazy and they'll get away from you. So whatever, if, if she's truly toxic, there are certain things that she's doing that help fuel her toxicity. You're not noticing it, but it's what it is. Why do you think she watches murder mysteries before she goes to sleep? Why is it always a crime drama playing and turn it off, turn it to cartoons. <laughs> <Make it. laughs> no, no, you don't get to, what's she listening to? You gonna be listening to Sexy Red? You broke. No. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> toxic people are trying to get things. They're not being toxic for no reason. They're gaining they're something out of how they operate. That's why they operate like that, because they get something. As soon as you find that out, you'll be able to cut off what they're getting, okay. and they will leave. Yeah. yeah. Message. <laughs> you were married once. Never. You weren't married. Never in life. So would you have a cohabitation agreement? Never. <laughs> How? How could I be a single parent and be married? You could. It wasn't two, me. You know, there are people that like were married and then they get divorced and then they become single parents. That's how that works. <laughs> yeah, but a person who's never been married means okay. he's never been married. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna yeah. take your word for it. Why would you need to take my word for it? Hold on, hold on. If I had been married, wouldn't it somebody have said who she was? No. It might have been a long time ago. No. <laughs> I've never not been famous, sir. I, I've just, I, just, I just worked the story out to you. That, I don't have no hidden mysteries in my life. That was Jesus. Oh, I don't Lord. have no periods in my life where it's unaccounted for. No, no, no. That person that said that was a liar. I got a case right now in L.A. This lady said she was my assistant for 14 years, and, and I heard her or something like that. I, Never worked for me, not a day in my life. Not a Liars day. Liars lie because they want to. But people always say, why would they lie? No. There are several women have said they was married to me. It's just when they went to court, they had to say, I was married to him spiritually. Common law. You shut up. <laughs> <laughs> How you going to be married to me? My kids don't know you. Well, they've lived in the Answer house me that. with you. So do you have a problem? Like do you have a problem bringing law, women around your kids? Days, I common law married. No, not then or now. <laughs> <laughs> I've always lived with several women. Like I'm known for several. That. Yeah. Like more than one. I've already told you that I prefer the company of women to yeah. the company of men. So if I told you that me and a couple dudes on my staff sometimes have to cohabitate, nobody finds a problem with that. Yeah, so it's me and three ladies cohabitating because that's how the business gets done. Like, I don't want a chef that scratches his nuts for it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, no disrespect to these guys that go around with these large male-only groupings, but... That's not my episode of Entourage. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you were approached. You were approached by seven gunmen. You were robbed, shot in the thigh. Say so it again. You were robbed once, correct? No, I never. Been you robbed. didn't get robbed. You didn't. You didn't get approached by gunmen. Tried to get robbed. They didn't take anything. I wasn't even the. I wasn't even. Um, the target. I wasn't even who they were talking to, and, and not because I say that. Because if you look at what time period it is, I'm not even making 5000 a year. So robbing me wasn't the answer. Now, <laughs> <laughs> this is before Oklahoma. If you, <laughs> you talking about a terrible condition. They'd have been disappointed thinking they'd get something off of you, huh? Mm, just if they'd like rob you. Look, I... <laughs> In three cities, there it's legendary that Cat Williams would walk down our streets with his baby in a baby stroller with a diaper bag with a gun in a diaper bag. The only thing I need is a pass. Don't mess with me and just let me go about my business. I, I'm living in Inglewood, Compton. I'm living in Manchester and Western. I'm in L.A., the gang capital of the world, gang, but gang. never robbed because why? I'm not pretending to be something I'm not. You think I'm a blood. You think I'm a crip. I'm from Ohio. 
I'm a comedian. <laughs> I'm a father. Right. I'm trying to do something out here. And not only do I not judge what what you doing, I'm not trying to be involved. Right. Okay, That's hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Got to stop flag on the play. So I just said Steve has yet to respond. He just responded. And um, I think I might do a reaction video for that, y'all. So I haven't seen it yet. Oh, Lord. He in a, he in a, uh, he in a barber's chair. Okay, okay. I'm going to put the phone down. <laughs> and um, we're definitely going to have to give a reaction on that. So, um, man, receipts and responses. <laughs> just dropping y'all so Cat Williams and just just, just and got the world shook the interview heard around the world Woo, let's go let's finish it y'all we almost there let's from just out of the channel to you touring right now Dark Matters the Dark Matter tour yeah filming next uh, uh, <sighs> Netflix special in May May yep next Netflix yeah. special at, oh YouTube Theater in Inglewood I might catch that mm. <laughs> I thought you might say that I will catch that one Right, because it's a homecoming for me. Because I lived on, um, I lived on Hazel, so you know. So I gotta catch people that. know I lived in the heart of Inglewood. They saw me walk down Market Street with the babies I'm raising. Like they understood that. No, no, no. I was really not pretend. Oh, he wanted me from the hood. No, I'm living there on the street. What's your favorite city to tour in? <laughs> <laughs> one is pan the shit. next one sir. right there you go <laughs> yeah that's the that's the real beauty of travel right that's why most people don't have the empathy and the sympathy that they need to have for other people mm -hmm. it's because they haven't seen other people right like if you went to ireland and you saw what I them people ireland. was like and yeah. you went to sweden and saw them people was like if you really went to Africa and you really you saw what the people Africa. was like, you went to no Haiti, you went to Puerto crappy. Rico, if you really traveled across the country, you would see that all people is the same. It's way more people that's good than the fucked up individuals you see. Mm -hmm. And if you understood that, it would change everything. So I don't, I, I, I don't have any favorites in the world just because every place is dealing with their own issues, their own troubles. All places look better than they actually are for the people that live there. Mm -hmm. And it's always a difference between what it seems like what it and is. what it is like. Yep. People will tell you, I went to Paris. I was Mika? there at the Eiffel Tower. It, it, bitch, you had bed bugs. <laughs> Hell yeah. There were rats yep. everywhere. The food bed was bug, terrible. Yeah. Parents is the number one uh, capital Don't tell some. Bug, well, Let me ask a question. There, when you go, when you go out, to these cities to tour, do you make it a habit of getting out? That's how I built my reputation. That's also how I ended up in jail 19 times. <laughs> uh, because when I come to do a show, I'm really in your city. So mm -hmm. whatever the strip club is, I'm there. Whatever the top bar is, I was there drinking. Whatever the... I was at it. You had a casino? I was at it. Like, what was it? Huh? Because I'm in your city. Right. I'm a, this is how I'm learning your city so that when I do my show, I can be talking about what I know, not what I think, mm -hmm. right? And so that was what I did at every city that I went to. The first 15 minutes of my show is what it's like to be here. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so that was always a part of what kept my legend going to the point where I can still be in these arenas without you ever seeing a poster with my picture on it, without you ever seeing a flyer, without you ever seeing a post that goes, hey, it's Kat, could y'all make sure y'all come out and come see me? Because I'm going to be in. Would Sounds you please like you come on out? Sound like Kevin. And I really am. Because we have a different respect. I know I'm coming. They know I'm coming. They know. I know they gonna be there. They know. And they know I'm gonna do they the know. best job I can possibly do. And they know beyond a shadow of a doubt, whatever hour he was doing when we last saw him, he won't be doing that hour when we see him this time. Mm -hmm. It's a whole new conversation. Mm -hmm. And because I've never strayed from that, they've never strayed from their part. I'm looking at some of the the, uh, the the actors that you've been on screen with: Cube, Tracy Morgan, Regina Hall, Terrence Howard, these are the, Nick Cannon. I mean Tiffany. I mean, bro, who who brings out the best in Cat Williams? How do, how does someone get the best out of Cat Williams? Do you need a comedian? Do you need a serious actor? How do we get the absolute best out of Cat Williams on screen? 
Well, I would be disingenuous if I didn't remind us that that's never anybody's goal. It's never anybody's goal to create a great situation for me to do a good job. Why? In, in a script. <laughs> the way it works is the script is already there. This is a character in the script. If they give me the job, I make it my job that this character here, this character here has to be as big as this whole project. So if you don't even see the movie School Dance, I want you to remember Who's got damn white baby? Is <laughs> yep. <laughs> and the only way that I can the guarantee thing I that you remember, remember my scene too. if you didn't remember a whole movie is if I make sure that my scenes are that good because that's what I watched. I watched great actors. You never saw De Niro. You never saw Pesci. You never saw any of these dudes in something. And you was like, nah, I don't really believe it. You sure you're the great Gatsby? Like, no. Like, you believe that this dude, Daniel, is a hobbit. That's part of the Elijah, Lord of the Rings. Elijah Woods. Right. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and so I, it's a, having a respect for the craft that I'm doing that means I, I'm trying to do the best job possible. What was it like working with Spike Lee doing Priceless? Spike Lee is everything that you said I was in my intro. He's just really an innovator and a groundbreaking one of a kind dynamo. And um, and I knew that they were like they tried to sabotage me even then. Like as soon as I said I wanted to get Spike Lee to direct it because that was the biggest thing I could do, they immediately gave. Spike to Gerard Carmichael and had him do his special too at the comedy store and just to undermine like, mm -hmm. but I, I <clears throat> if there's one thing you can take away from me as a person, whether you like me or you don't, if you take this from me, you will be a better person. If you decide today that you're going to live every day like it's your last for real, which means have a conversation with yourself every night that, okay, that was it. May not be no more after that. And really yeah. count yourself yep. every day like this could yeah, be it. like you dying, y'all. All right. Before I go to bed, this could be it. All right. How's that looking? If you can do that, it'll change your life. You'll really start making decisions and living your life like this all you got. Just mm. this one day. But you could be a winner. You could be a winner on this day. True. It just... It's just work ethic. And not the work ethic they talk about. They tell you work ethic where they do all these movies. I'm the hardest working man. Well, no, oh, I'm not to work every day. But right. yeah. I'm saying, I go to work all the time. Everybody who works goes both. to work every day. Shut up. Right? <laughs> Shut up. You get, what? You think I respect you more than my gardener? I don't. I don't. He work every day. Rain or shine. I don't know if you saw this, but Taraji P. Henson got extremely emotional the other oh, day. Yeah. She was giving an interview. Yes. And saying that... It's the same shit Monique been saying, y'all, so... They're vastly underpaid. It's a the math is, is not you math. Know, everybody want to make they get you know X amount now. of dollars by the time Uncle Sam get his cut, by the time the agency get their cut, and what you see they were supposed to get is a fraction of that. Where, where, where do you come down on that, Kat? It was the saddest thing ever, because imagine... Imagine being in your genre, in your sub-niche, whatever it is. Imagine being in your lane. Imagine being one of the very top of your lane. That, to the point where if they don't take you for the role, there's not three black actresses that they can say are bigger than you that we're going to give this to. Imagine you being at that point and have to humble yourself and say, they're not paying me, y'all. And they not making my pay go up because I'm doing better or nothing. It don't matter to them that I'm famous and people know me or nothing. They want to pay me exactly what they paying the new girl. Mm -hmm. And I've been suffering under it for a, de a decade now and just taking it. I just been getting whooped. But I just got to come say, this is wrong. <gasps> uh. We should be ashamed. But this is a country where we don't pay the teachers and then we say the kids is the most important thing. You can't have both of them. If you do that, we're going to end up with a generation that can't read. Guess what? Generation Z and A can't read. Why? Because who was giving them a book?
We got an iPad or a phone, right. and now the letters don't mean that there's no cursive writing. Right, Sorry they took cursive out of so, us. Yeah, uh, it, this is what get period of time it's in. It's work it, on my cursive. The period where the victims get to say, they've been hurting me for a long time, and I just ain't said nothing because I was trying to be strong, and I didn't want to shame anybody. Mm. When our people call out for help, we got to understand. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like we, we, we put too much pressure on Tyler Perry. You know what I mean? He ain't put nobody on. The people that been in his productions, they not famous. All of them can walk through the mall without security. <laughs> be what you're going to be, but put your people on. If you a gay person and you in mm -hmm. there, put some other gay people on. Oh, Lord, is that shot said Tyler? Put somebody on. I mean, on. Christian and already, you know, or directed don't be that it might be why people keep them. saying gatekeepers. Because mm -hmm. clearly, y'all are keeping these gates. Clearly. Wild and out. How difficult was it for Nick Cannon to get you on, and what what was that what was that experience like? I've known Nick Cannon since he was a teenager. He had to have his he, he in the comedy club. If you're underage, you can't be in the regular club. You had to be in the kitchen. Right. So I was the master of the kitchen every comedy place because I got a child, and my child is back here in this place while I go on stage. Right. So I've known Nick Cannon since he was 14. Nick Cannon has never called and asked me to do one single thing, and I turned him down because I've known him since he was a young black child in Hollywood. Wow. So um, what I, I did Peter, in so. Wild and Out was <laughs> to that. be his protector <laughs> and to be his voice um, with hip hop. Yeah, so the whole thing was the thing that he was trying to do had never been done before. You can't bring six comics in and let six comics talk shit about six rappers because the six rappers will beat the six comics ass. Right. Mm -hmm. You would have to have a comic that could actually stand in between and go, look, we comics, we gonna say what we gonna say, y'all gonna take it and understand it's a joke. If you want to fight, we fight before the show. So you can go out there with your black eye. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to do it comedically. Oh, damn. This is what yeah, needed wow. to take place right. in order to be, for it to be successful, which is why it had already aired and didn't work. And then suddenly when it comes back with me, it suddenly works. Because respect has to be in there as well. Or if you're trying to do it with Kevin Hart, you and him going to get run over. You, you, you a teenager, he five too. Like, what's gonna happen? Who are some of your favorite young comedians? I don't, I haven't seen a young comedian I don't like. If you name any of the young comedians, I'm aware of all of them and they're all doing a great job. It doesn't matter if it's Country Wayne or Desi Banks, it doesn't matter if it's Carlos or Chico, it doesn't matter if it's uh, DC or Just Hilarious, it, do it, really doesn't, it really doesn't matter once we go to the young part. Um, the young comedians are dealing with things that we never dealt with, and so that gives them more benefits, but it also gives them uh, more chances of failure, so it's not easier for them um so yeah i'm i'm a big supporter of um young comics we we have uh miss pretty yeah, ricky and love. takara williams um i've taken 25 uh black women on the road in these tours um it's important to me that the young comic uh gets the benefits and the advantages of the big comics platform <laughs> matt rife Wildin' Out recently got canceled. You see Jonathan Majors, what he went through, Marvel Ooh, dropped him as soon as the guilty uh, 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 the conviction quick. came out. What, what's happening? And you were telling the hey, you saw that black woman come get his charge cut in half? <laughs> Thank you, Megan Good. God bless, bless you, you baby. going to save that slave. <laughs> oh, Lord, and he no. had to be there by himself. Not he was getting all slave. Guilty, 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 guilty. Yep. She came in there, it was just so beautiful. They had to knock half of it off. <laughs> Bless his heart. So, Matt Wright, you know, you know him from uh, Wild and Out. He gets canceled for trying, trying to tell I, a... I never knew him from Wild and Out, to be honest. Okay. I, I, 
I came across him as a new comic. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm really just trying to see the comics, judge where they are, see it. Yeah. Why right. did he Go get ahead. fired from Wild so, Now? Let me look him up. The, the canceling. Uh, yeah, what what, what canceling. do you think about this cancel culture? You see the situation with Jonathan Major. I mean, for all sense and purposes, I, I don't know if maybe he can bounce back in, in a couple of years, but man, he was he was hot. He was hot. As, he was cooking. Mm, I mean, you see him yeah. in Creed. He's in the Marvel yeah, movies. Goes. And then, what goes up must come like down, that. people. Maybe I'm a conspiracy theory, but I thought Cal Williams said any that time they make you into that position, part of that contract is you do understand whenever we want to take you down, we can, right? Mm -hmm. Part of giving you the world. First of all, they went around around the world for two years straight telling any women that would listen that this was a good looking Negro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Since when? When did y'all start liking a big nose? And uh -uh. When did y'all like a little head and a big jaw? When? Since when? That look like my daddy. Don't do when you like, like my that. Daddy? Don't you do like black people's though. features like body. that? If this ugly nigga is good looking, <laughs> then all <laughs> niggas is good looking. <laughs> Anytime you see them telling you something you can't believe, just understand it's a play. Yeah. And it don't matter. You gonna know it's a play as soon as they get in that position and think they gonna tell somebody something. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. Marvel will cancel you so f you won't be allowed to read a comic book. <laughs> what is you talking about? <laughs> ah, get out of here! Get out of here, ugly boy. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they love fooling the people. So oh, do. <laughs> What's your relationship like with Suge Knight? You still feel close with Suge? Oh, he got Have you spoken to him? Have you talked to him recently? Yeah, he's doing good. Um, yeah, he's uh Man, when you a friend, you a friend for life with Cat Williams. Oh, he a real nigga. Yeah, because the people that come to me are trying to better their life. They're not trying to continue doing what they have been doing. Okay. So when somebody comes to me, male or female, it is in the auspices that this is what I did, words, this is what I used to do, fail. this ain't what I want to do no more, and I want to do something else, okay. and I'd like it to go a different way. Okay. That's, I, that's what I offer. Yeah. So, um, if you come to me under those auspices, oh, then my loyalty is like Why would it not be? I believe it's A-U-S-P-I-C. Tory Lanez and Meg. There we go. What, what would you take on that? Because I know you you got to take on everything. I know it's, you a, it's a difficult position because somebody's not going to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And the truth has got to be told. In all circumstances, the truth has got to be told. So if you don't want to say she shot her, then you shot her. And that's the end of that. Wow. You said you've never, have you ever spent time in jail? I mean, you got 19 felonies. Third time. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> what you expect? When, when you was in there, no, what was going through your mind, Kat? What did, what did, I mean, some people like, man, I had an opportunity to reflect, and I was like, "Man, this ain't the place for me. I ain't coming back back here." When you in, so, so what? I've never, I've jail? never been in jail, and it was my decision to be there. If 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 it's dangerous to be in the hood, and you have to have a gun on you for protection, and it's either be judged by six or I mean, judged by twelve judged or by carried 12, by yeah. six, hey, I'm yeah. always gonna have my heater on me. So if you want to tell me that you're going to pull me over 15 times looking for it, I'm going to tell you 15 times you're going to find it. Unfortunately, I smoke cigarettes and weed. If you catch me 15 times, 15 times I'm going to have it on me. Smoking that weed, feeling fine. What Got do you think I'm in jail thinking? Time. Oh, I don't fuck up. <laughs> Side note. Here at Difference World and Third Eye ENT, we do not condone, endorse, or uh, what's that other word I'm looking for? Yeah, we, we just not with the shits when it comes to condoning and endorsing, you know, drinking and smoking. Here on, on Difference World, uh, whatever you do at home in your personal matter, that's your business, but we don't promote that here. Uh, maybe when the camera's off or whatever, but who knows? But with that being said, you guys, let's get back into it. Just wanted to note that. Difference World, y'all, come and learn. Damn these decisions. I'm not going to protect my life at all when I get out of here. <laughs> Fuck it. Let them do what they want to do to me. No. No. I, when I'm in there, I'm fine grandpa. and I'm understanding that I'm put here for a reason and the people that get joy off me being in here are really going to look stupid because I'm finna be free because you got to be setting this up. 
I'm never anywhere to get anything. You don't know I just made $300,000 in your city. That's why you think I might be out here as a ne'er-do-well. Mm, you think I'm, he's smoking <laughs> weed. Yeah, he's got a medical license for it. He needs it. It's his only medication. I got a prescription. Do you mind if he takes it? It helps him eat. Because he does 19 100 city tours, flying across the line. And so he doesn't get hungry on the regular. He doesn't get sleepy at night. He's got to literally put himself to sleep. He's literally got to make himself eat. So this marijuana helps him do both of those things. Yeah. Marijuana well, help you sleep? Oh, yeah. <laughs> because remember, remember, as a comedian, what you're doing is against your natural timeline. Your natural timeline wouldn't be that you would start your work day at 8 o'clock p.m. Right. And then your work day is over at 2.30 a.m. Like, that's a weird... Yes. Right? So to tell your body now that we're pumped up on endorphins, now let's go to sleep at 3. It don't work like that. Your body has to try to get a whole new schedule. So, you know, it suffered, but that's what worked for me. I consistently used it. I told people all across the country, don't worry, this will be legal in our country. As soon as Almost. they find out how to charge taxes for it, yep. we will be legal in this country. Do they view me as some sort of visionary for my forward thing? No, no. You own drugs. <laughs> that's what I heard. <laughs> Can't, but how have you been? I mean, bro. Every time they try the to put you down, they mm. try to put you to the back. Yeah. You put you Can't bounce up. With your you move right up, back please. to the front. Damn you! I mean, you like a Super Bowl. You just keep bouncing, and you bounce higher. Trampoline skin is something that you ask God. I ain't never for. heard that before. I heard elegant. When skin. I watched you play football, you had it. Hmm? There's some people that. There's really no such thing as hitting Shannon Sharp so hard that he don't want to run the ball the next play. Right. Absolutely. And if that's your only goal is to hit him so hard that he don't want to be him no more, you just have a luck. Yeah, you wasting your time. There's no, no your coach can't help you. There ain't no pep talk going to help you. <laughs> don't matter about the uniform, your chair. None of that matters. If it ever gets to mano y mano, may the best man win. And if you've been you living your entire line, boy, life boy. trying to be the best man that you can for mm -hmm. yourself, then you should feel great about those odds. What do you think about Kanye rant? Oh, God. What's going on with Kanye? We Kanye. From a distance. We only digging at the how comedy, you know right? Kanye. I don't know if you've been around Kanye, but from a distance, what, 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 what do you suspect is going on? I suspect that we're pretty awful people if we say that somebody got a mental illness and then we watch what they do. And not help them. If you say somebody got special needs, then why would you be watching them and holding them accountable like everybody else? Wouldn't you grade them on a curve? Wouldn't you go, whew, this guy. Because, I mean, what are we reacting to? What are we reacting to? You're the one that put him in a position where he thought he was God and could call himself Jesus. Yeah, he thought he was and walking on water. You're the one told a guy that writes musical lyrics that he was a genius. Mm -hmm. You're the yeah, one that's that like, enough. so what? What do you expect? The guy married a whore. Oh, like, no. Oh, come on, cat. Come on. I knew it was coming. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. I mean, married her because she was one. Yeah. Not he didn't whore. know. She still is one. He Boy, understood you know, that he wanted that. He, he courted that. Anything. That's what he wanted to yeah. base his but maybe family she got, she got on. a good heart, though. Mm, I know what you're going to say. Don't you say it, cat. <laughs> Don't you say it. I will move the conversation. If what I'm saying is not correct, then how does she end up with Pete Davidson? Hey. Sip, sip. I mean, it happens all the time. And what if you weren't even good enough for Pete and he leaves you? What do that mean the product was? Well, didn't she leave him, right? No, I don't, I don't support him to therapy? or villainize Kanye because I don't understand what it is we want from him. I don't know why we look at a basketball player and say, he didn't score no hockey goals this whole season. <laughs> <laughs> he don't play hockey. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on.
Kanye don't say nothing I can agree with. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the weird guy in the beginning with the pink sweaters right. when we met him. Like, yeah. what do you think moving to a beat of your own drum? This, this dude started a church and kept cussing. <laughs> Nobody in black church said nothing. You would have thought all the pastors would have came. You can't be no gospel artist. You just said fuck that bitch. Oh my God. <laughs> Nobody said nothing. Cause TD Jake's over there with oh, me. No, oh, no. No. Come on, Cam. Come on, Cam. Only the guy you had <laughs> here time, has girl. been upfront and honest and a man of God and humble and took the L's he had to take and didn't. I. I did see it was trending though, but I ain't know. I, I don't. I, don't, you, you I ain't know, know why I can't. I you don't. Know. Quit lying. You know, nigga. Lying. Let me go to this question right here. Yeah, this yeah. All people that love like the I'm truth got to be happy if the truth coming out and lies is getting exposed. That's hey. just what time it is. I mean, I ain't upset. I ain't mad. Are you related to uh, Luda? <laughs> no. Um, so there was a crossroads <laughs> where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing. And it had to be one or the other of us. So and more decisions than one person saying it, it so got it to be real. Both of us, we were equal. One of us had to cut off all their hair and couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points. And the next person they said was going to yeah. get $200 million because they were going to pay him $10 million a movie to do 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons persons turned out to be ludicrous, and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. Now, <laughs> one person ended up with a light-skinned, ugly face. Oh, never done it. Remember I told you that if I say that, it applied to seven people? Yeah. He did. <laughs> okay, so back to that comment again. I'm not going to endorse that, what he said about the ugly light face, but he, what he did say has been turned out to be true. I did see the receipts online, and um, they, I, if you guys haven't seen it, it's a little uh, chart with the black celebrities and they, you know, light skinned wise, and it, it does kind of make sense. Now, none of these women, we don't really know who they are. They never give, you know, any interviews. We only see them, you know, when they hanging on their husband's, you know, arm. And so, hey, some of the things, you know, what he's saying, it makes a lot of sense, y'all. I don't know. I mean, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't you know, Luda, my boy now, I've always rocked with him, but it does make sense. And when he did cut his hair and 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 braids, everybody was wondering why, and he really wasn't giving a clear answer, just saying that he was starting over new. But in his defense, it's back. He got the braids and the, uh, the little blaze uh, sideburn. So I don't know. But going back into it, y'all. Let's go. We almost here. It's Nine part of what they give you. There we go. Okay, I didn't get it. You didn't I'm not get it. mad about it. How much money did they give? Two hundred, sir. It's her. <laughs> Fast and Furious is on what number right Ten. now? Mm -hmm. See? It makes sense. And I'm about tired of Fast and Furious, to be honest with you. I'm about to get me one of the more women to look, right? look, look the same. That's what they all end up saying at the end of the day. Kevin told you he wasn't going to wear no dress until they offered mm -hmm. him the dress, and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision. Duh. Because <laughs> you didn't make it before they brought it up, did you? Right. It's okay. It's all right. You it's have a lot of politics. Never talk about it. I'm not that controversial. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 where are we go? Where are we headed, Cat? Uh, this is sad. Yeah, this, this we've never been here hell. before. My God. We've never been at the point where neither option is good for us in real life. No. This is a different conversation. This is. Would you rather go back with your ex? Or would you rather go back with the person before them? <laughs> Man, one yeah. of them motherfuckers. Both bad, Both bad <laughs> options. Like one guy, one here, guy can barely put his sentences together, and the other guy will put sentences together from whatever he's read <laughs> or whoever told him. Like, but how do we get, how do we get here? How do we get here? All division divides. There's no hey, way that around part. that. Right. All division divides. Um, politics, even in the beginning when our Constitution was drawn up, the, the two parties was not what they had in mind. No. They always thought that it would be two main and another independent mm -hmm. party. They always assumed the independent party would be um, just as strong as the others. Uh, a, a lot of that just didn't happen. And... Um, 
That's what I've learned more from comedy is that Republicans laugh at the exact same thing that Democrats laugh at. As long as I'm talking to Democrats, I can make them laugh for one hour straight about what Republicans do. By the same token, I can go talk to Republicans for one whole hour and have them dying about the stuff that Democrats do. But at the end of the day, who does that? Yeah, your team got an offense and a defense. They not supposed to be enemies. The enemy is the other side. Wow. You can't do politics like that. Nope. It's not good for the country. Man, you see this Mark Zuckerberg building this $270 million bunker? I know. What's up with that? What's going on? You have a billion dollars. We have learned that you can do whatever you want to do. When Elon Musk wants to send space things in space, you don't have to ask nobody's permission. Congress don't meet. Senate don't meet. No police department got to be warned. He don't need a permit. None of that. If you got a billion dollars, you do what you want to do, and then you tell them what you did. Man. And that's how it goes. What he built on the bar, a $270 million bunker? What do you know that we don't know, Cat? Kim Jong Un. <laughs> I don't know what you don't know. Do you understand that people that are not very bright are in charge of nuclear bombs all across the country? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what he knows. He knows that 30% of all weapons systems are running off regular Wi Fi. So what does that mean? That means if a solar flare or a meteor hits either one of those, literally a bomb can go off just because the system accidentally got turned off. Yeah, that's what he knows. Mm -hmm. the, the people that are in power know the end is near, that the man. people that are running right the most God, complicated and <laughs> deadliest things on the planet are just an average idiot. Mm -hmm. And you know lots of idiots. I do. Yep. I do too. And these, these people are not special. Back in the day they were. Yeah. <clears throat> not today. Not today. You say you smoke a little weed. You don't smoke with Snoop. Smoke a little weed. Smoke a little weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I smoke that good. I'm actually a bigger smoker than Snoop. You know? Oh, I'll damn. Tell you that. But I don't, well, you know, Snoop like, gave I don't mix smoke, anything with my weed. Smoke, smoke, dog, I just no do weed, right? So... Yeah. No, yeah, nobody has that minimum. I mean, you nobody, gotta... nobody has nobody, nobody does twenty blunts a day like me for thirty years. Like, Damn. like I was the first person to have a weed roller. Like somebody whose job it was. Like I haven't, I haven't rolled a blunt in twenty years. You probably forgot. like if you go. I'm saying. I, I prefer the saliva of ladies. Oh my goodness! No, no, <laughs> understand what I'm saying. If for a blunt. It's necessary for yeah, it to get lit, yeah. right? And so if you had spent 20 years smoking with dudes, that's a lot of male saliva that you would have just accidentally ingested. I, I, can't, but if I, I, can't, I can't be this specimen on that. <laughs> it takes uh, the saliva of nice ladies on that. But yeah, I'm, I'm a, yeah, that's all I do. That's just do that. you consider yourself a king of comedy? Where did, where did Ken no, we... they they consider that. Oh, that. Like like when after Bernie left, them <sighs> same three guys I'm telling you about the Kings. Yeah. Right. Because DL is the greatest. Yeah. There's no DL I don't know about gets that. tolerated. No. Um, no but he ain't funny to me. They came to me. I was supposed to be the fourth King. I got the offer. Then what happened? Yeah, I, I think turned DL it down. Funny. Why? Why? Because you shit so. on Bernie. And I know the truth. You think I'm let you phone. shit on Bernie and then come get me? I'm the next king? Fuck you. Father, fuck you. <laughs> Why? Because the whole time Bernie was here, you was acting like you was funnier than him. The reason you was supposed to go last is because it was your tour. Tell the truth. It was Steve's tour. Mm. Not it was going to be called the Kings of Comedy. It was Steve's tour. These are the guys opening for him. Of course you got to close if it's your tour. That's why it was such a big deal. But you couldn't do it. Because you can't beat the best. I was just wondering where's the top And until you humble yourself, <laughs> you will forever be kinged by the king. Hey. And because you finally did it, because you didn't have no other choice, and now that he gone, you're going to act like he wanted to be a movie star. You nice. stop it.
capping like a mother. That man was funnier Big than all of y'all. Like and y'all thought y'all had one over on exactly. him. You thought he was black and ugly, mm -hmm. and you were good looking, and he couldn't Her make it, shit. cause you did. And that ain't the way comedy works. The king is the funniest, period, every time. And that's why no audience member was ever swayed. It didn't matter where Bernie went. You think if Bernie went first, he wasn't the king? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. Get your ego out of this. You let the best be the best, right? Cat, Cat where you related? I don't want to say on that, yo. Um, Real quickly, he represented Bernie very well and giving him his flowers from the beginning, middle, and end. So big shout out to Cat Williams again for holding it down for Bernie Mac. I can just tell him he up in heaven right now saying, who you with? <laughs> oh, Lord. Man, rest in peace, Bernie Mac. That was my TV dad uh, coming up, man. I love watching the Bernie Mac show. And when he died, the day he died, I remember I was working at Taco Bell in the drive through and a lady came through and she's like, girl, Bernie Mac died. And I just... What? And I was, I was, I was hurt. I'm sure we all was, and we miss him dearly. And so, thank you, Cat, for you know speaking the truth on his legacy and 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 putting respect on him with those who were disrespecting. He did say in the past that Steve tried to rip him off, and that's why he didn't fuck with him after the Kings of Comedy. And so it does make sense, as well as it, it throughout the years things that got leaked out about him and Steve. And so what's done at it all comes to the light, y'all. And so with that, um. Cat represented Bernie well, and I love how he just, you know, towards the end of the interview, he closed it out and giving him his flowers. And so, again, rest in peace to Bernie Mac. He is and always will be, even in death, the king of comedy, in my opinion. Ain't nobody fucking with Bernie Mac. I don't give a damn who they are. The fact that this man's joke, he's been gone for 15 years now, and he can still, I can go and watch a movie with him in it, and he tells a joke, and I'll laugh like I just heard it from the first time in my life and that's how you know that that's a real true comedic and that's gifted man and just hate that he gone and and but hey that's god's will and we ain't got no wants when it comes to god's will so rest in peace bernie mac i love you i miss you and you know i hope you proud of cat for representing you and i know i am man you know who you with my boy Bernie Mac. <laughs> so let's finish it out, you guys. Here we go. As well as, again, if you guys uh, liked my reaction video, show me by liking, sharing, commenting, and definitely hitting that subscribe button, you guys. I can't believe I made it through damn near three hours of sitting and watching through this interview. Um, thank you guys for tuning in with me as well. But let's go ahead and finish it out, and then we'll close our difference. We'll be live with this one, yeah? Let's go. Come and learn. Good hey, gentlemen. Thanks for coming on, bro. I really appreciate that. Thanks for sharing the, Thank you. the stories, Thank setting you, the man. record straight. Now, you know they're going to double back. Yep, they're coming Impossible. back. Responses and Impossible. receipts. Only because if once you play this back, you'll realize <laughs> I didn't say anything that made me look in a good light. I, I wasn't tearing down others to boost myself up. I, but I do have to acknowledge things that did not take place. Like. We are very ingenuous if we say this is not a game and we don't play it and people ain't in positions and people don't have their favorites and they group and they mm. click. And, right. But that happens in all businesses. Right. We, no, no. Say what side you on. Say why you don't like the other side. And then get to the game. But in the game, I'm wiping the field with them to the point where they don't even compete anymore. So how you gonna let them do that been on the bench for 15 years. Uh, I would have beat Jordan's ass. Shut up, Jordan's still alive. <laughs> we'll call Jordan right now. You can't beat him now. <laughs> Hold on, y'all. Before I just end this clip, I do got to say that Shannon does look like the um, evil Urkel twin. <laughs> the evil Urkel doll, y'all. He do. But that ain't to stop it in. He ain't making his money. This ain't no shade to him, I will say, though. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. That's all I'm saying, you know. Not then. You can't beat him now. Shut up. <laughs> Cat Williams. Shannon Shaw. Different world. You, Come and learn. <laughs> all, my life. all right. So that's that, y'all. All right. Let's get into it. All right. So we're back. So, with that, you guys, 
Um, hopefully you enjoyed listening and watching that interview. Woo! <laughs> oh, man, that was a lot. Um, as you guys seen, you know, Cat Williams. I mean, we have just seen the shit, so I don't know. Why, why am I going to repeat myself? But I want to share this with you guys. I hopefully you enjoyed uh, my reaction um, and my thoughts and opinions on the interview that Cat Williams did on the Shannon Sharp Club Shay Shay podcast. Um, what you guys thought about it? Drop your, you know, your comments and your uh, your likes. Definitely hit that share and subscribe button and show me, you know, uh, some love, you guys. I do appreciate it. As well as um, what else? What else we got going on in the difference world? Um, what's tomorrow? Damn, I'm going by fast, y'all. It's Tuesday already, second week in uh, January. But uh, we got a lot coming up. Stay tuned. Uh, as well as don't forget to check out my uh, my website, differenceworld.net. You can check out all my other social media handles, including my Instagram and my TikTok. As well as for anybody looking for motivational speakers, you guys can get at me. As well as the looking to do podcast collaborations. I'm free of charge. You just go to my website again, differenceworld.net. You book it, girl. Uh, what else? What else? What else? My book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, is also available on my website. Again, this book was written to encourage and inform thought provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. So, again, be advised that this is intended for a mature audience. It has sensitive content. And so, if you can't take this type of heat, still come on to the kitchen y'all just get your little fire bucket you'll be okay you might get singed but you'll survive <laughs> that's the point of it all you guys is to have these conversations that need to be had that are often turned a blind eye to and swept under the rug uh, the purpose of it all is to get your attention when you come to that round table and have these uncomfortable conversations to where we talk about it so much to where we come up with systemic change over time instead of dwelling on systemic racism so again go to my website differentwell.net and get a copy of my book what if a controversial paradigm shift and again i appreciate all the love and support that you guys are showing me please keep it coming and don't stop yeah all right you guys moving on with the different train what else we got coming up you guys tomorrow is tuesday or wednesday i don't know depending on the time frame i don't really know what's going on i look outside so i can't tell you if it's not a day now but with that being said you guys we got a lot coming up in difference well and dropping a lot of content for you guys so again that's why you guys got to hit that notification bell and that subscribe button so when i drop content you guys come into difference well and you come and learn what's going on with the girl as well as you guys let's go ahead and do our mental health check for those that may need it including myself for those that are going through any type of mental anguish or stress including depression suicidal thoughts having anxiety attacks uh, what else dealing with bullying or even the drug relapse uh, whatever the case may be please know that it's okay to not be okay but don't ever sit there and not be okay go get help whatever that may mean to you be it talking with a therapist a family member a friend uh, a pastor in your church picking up a hobby cut people off mending broken bridges whatever the case may mean I mean get on medication if that works works for you do whatever it is that you have to do to keep your mental health in check and keep you from going off the deep end and possibly taking anybody with you. If you need or if you know anybody who may need these mental health resources, please feel free to share it with them. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255 or you can call or text 988 or you can text 741-741. And for those that would prefer to go online, you guys can check out mentalhealthishelp.us or you can visit 988lifeline.org and for those that are outside of the U.S. that's watching your girl's YouTube channel shout out to you guys as well you guys can visit incounseling.com and remember you guys although I am giving you these mental health resources please remember to do your own homework and your own research to find what works best for you because at the end of the day you're the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters nobody else all right lastly when it comes to the mental health check i want you guys to remember that again whatever trial and tribulation that you are going through at this time of your life this too shall pass and you will get through it so going off the deep end is not an option it's not worth it so therefore don't do it all right 
so with that being said you guys we're going to close out with the mental health just reminding you guys to do whatever it is that you have to that keeps your mental health in check and keep you from going off the deep end and possibly taking anybody with you yeah and so with that moving right along oh this was the long this got to be the longest vlog ever and so i don't know how long this is going to take to upload um but with that being said you guys thank you so much for rocking out with me i appreciate it uh, again don't forget uh if you guys do your reaction videos if you have any tips for me and ideas on how i can work on like the lighting like like looking at my light i don't like the light it's too you know fuzzy so help me out with that you guys i don't know what i'm doing here i'm just looking at youtube videos and going on going along as i learning as i go so again drop that comment for me hit that like button if you like my first reaction video uh, as well as don't forget hit that con that subscribe and that notification bell so when i drop the content you guys come into different world and come and learn yeah so with that being said as well don't forget whatever it is in life that you guys are feeling you're destined for you have to manifest plan and prepare for it and it will come to you guys different world come and learn peace or should i say boy boy <laughs> all right yeah i'm out of here i'm tired i'm going to sleep what if what if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.